And the, the risk disclosure states here that futures trading is very risky and only risk capital should be used. And risk capital is defined as money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not indicative of the future results. You know, last, uh, in 2017, we had a record period of 82 winning days in a row. That's right. Every single day in our Day Traders Action Live room was a winning day, not just on our live called out NASDAQ trades, but we also offer you the Boomerang Day Trader system, which is used by thousands of traders around the globe. And on the Boomerang signals, which I'm going to show you later, I'm going to go over those in detail, and you'll see some forming live here. Uh, also, seven or 82 winning days in a row. It's almost unheard of, and it's almost mathematically impossible. Well, we did it again in the last quarter of 2018. We had 58 winning days in a row. Every single day, a winning day on both crude oil and on the mini NASDAQ trades that I called out live. So that's very important to understand, and that's why we read the risk disclosure statement, because it doesn't... Even though that was the past, still, it doesn't guarantee the future in trading. And we never say that it does. But we do like to tell you our results because I think that's very important. So welcome again to the webinar. This is going to be um, about two-hour webinar. I'm going to be recording it now. Let me check and make sure everything's working. Yes, it is. And that's very important. We want to make sure and get this all on tape so that you'll have a, a record of it. And so welcome and thanks for joining with us today. We're in nice and early. And um, I like to start our trading usually at the top of the hour there at 10 o'clock, right about a half an hour after the market opens. And sometimes traders ask me, why don't you start when it opens? I go, well, <laughs> you're going to love this. That's because most in the old days when there was floor, it was all floor traders. They were the gods of the pits and everything. And they were the ones who knew. And I learned a lot from them because I used to go down to the New York Futures Exchange, which was called the knife contract back then. It can slice you a big piece of the pie or it can slice, you know, well, <laughs> something else. So that the S&P 500 was traded out of Chicago and that was the big contract, $500 a point. Now on the E-mini S&P, we only have $50 a point. So it's a reduced contract. But back then you had the alternate, which was the knife contract in New York, which is $250 a uh, contract per point. Still five times what we have now in the E-mini S&P. And what we specialize here in the Day Traders Action Room is the mini NASDAQ contract. Now, what I'm displaying here today, just to start out, I got lots to go over with you, so, um, you know, please be patient. We're going we're gonna to cover a lot of material today, and I think you'll find it enjoyable. I won't talk too fast, but to get a lot done, I want to make sure and do that. And, of course, we'll get to all your questions, and uh, thank you so much. Good morning to you all, and thank you for your kind morning comments there and on the Q&A period here. And as I mentioned, uh, it will be recorded. It's being recorded right now as we speak. So we will have a question and answer period later. And uh, again, good to see you all. Many familiar faces and friends. Uh, Luke, good to see you. Bashrat, always a pleasure. Chris, thank you for joining with us and, and many of you others. Uh, again, this is the Boomerang Live and Day Traders Action Seminar. I'm going to go over all the material with you about our room and what we do and everything like that and if you'd like to join I'll show you where you can sign up for only $39 and you can start out uh, during that period and during that period we like to recommend that you spend at least two to three days just watching us trade risk-free risk-free means you're not trading so you have no risk you're just watching me trade the markets and building your own track record that means writing down the trades that I make, get a yellow pad or one of those type of things, and make some horizontal lines and make five or six columns. And for every day, write down the exact trades that I called out. And I go over them very carefully with you. And when we call them out, we pride ourselves uh, in the Day Traders Action Room on being very extremely honest and meticulous as to when the trade was entered, where it was entered, and all that. 
By the way, of quick note, I'm just happening to note this. Look at this crude oil. Crude oil got goosed all the way up to over $66 a barrel. And I'm just noticing how hard it's getting hit here over the last couple. This is all Globex. I'm just quickly scrolling back. Don't mind. You know, I, I didn't notice this yesterday. I was busy here. They finally got it all goosed back over 65. They jumped it up into 66. But look at this. I just happened to notice this. That's why I'm pointing it out. This is our boomerang chart. And again, I'll, these are all winning trades here. I'll go into details with you. Boomerang day trader trades around the clock on crude oil. The absolute best contract, I think, to trade with for just about everyone. Now, it's like all futures contracts. It's fast and furious, but um, that's part of the fun we have here in day trading. Is, um, In fact, I often like to joke, I said, uh, us, us day traders, those who are really active like we are in the day transaction room, Again, just a joke, but we're like the hell's angels of the financial market. I mean, in the sense of individual traders, you know, we get all, get all ganged up in the day traders action room, put on our patches and our torn uh, blue jean jackets, get on our Harleys, rev them up, and uh, we're going to go terrorize the markets <laughs> and hopefully not get not see a rival gang come in and, and uh, try to start a fight or anything. And that rival gang is known as the riggers, or what I call the Federal Reserve riggers, because it is the Federal Reserve. And they rig the markets uh, continuously, in fact, more so ever than in history. Now, my name again, as you know, is Mohan. I've become famous since 2001 when I started my uh, trading services way back in 2001, 18 years ago. And the whole purpose in doing that was I, call, I was calling out the, the riggers and pointing out how they're rigging the markets. Now this is nothing new and it's nothing necessarily unique to me except I'm probably the foremost person that calls them out in the room every day and we show you exactly where they're rigging mark the markets at which prices which levels and everything and I'll be going over some of that today with you. But I became well known for forecasting the exact daily directional forecast of the market for the next day and that's never been done before in history it's always been considered impossible it's like if I ask you where's the market going tomorrow you'd say well nobody knows that it's impossible well I proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that we could prove whether we could do that and I did it with the newsletter I have well my newsletter got so popular with thousands of subscribers that it got picked up by a larger financial firm and off and running we were well, during that period back in the day before these wonderful webinars where you just come on in your living room wherever you are around the world, and again, welcome to all of you. I see your names here, and thanks again so much for joining with us. Um, I would do live seminars, and um, in the, here's a picture of me. We hear one seminar where we had 320, actually over 320 traders in one giant Hall in the Marriott in Boca Raton, Florida, at this particular webinar here, and oh, it was a real uh, amazing situation. We had over a dozen professional floor traders that flew in from Chicago. Those guys don't go anywhere unless they feel it's really worth their while. But they hopped on a plane, took the day off from their floor trading, and came in to see me, as well as over 20 brokers. Who again, um, <clears throat> they they generally are not going to just for one particular character, especially this long-haired fellow standing here in front of the podium, are going to go and fly in and spend the money and stay at the Marriott and spend all, you know, it's $250 a night back then, and that was in 2004. So, uh, you know, they're not going to do that. We had people coming in from Russia, from Europe, all over the world as far as you know ways Russia and Europe and coming in to see me trade and uh, do the seminar showing my methods and again they paid a thousand dollars a ticket and for two days and you know we had a nice uh, huge buffet every day and you know I spent a lot extra time after I was talking with them but I wanted to show you that uh, now obviously we're on the webinar it's free so it's a lot more convenient Excuse me a quick second. <coughs> we 
We had a wild day yesterday, so my voice is still a little bit scratchy from that. Don't mind. We'll get it. Uh, everything will work out good today. Here's our theme for the Day Traders Action Live Room. And I trade every day in the room, Monday through Thursday, usually, unless we have <coughs> a Federal Reserve uh, interest rate announcement day. We stand aside in those days or a testimony like next week. Uh, there's going to be two days of testimony with Attorney General Barr over the Mueller report, which will be a real fiasco. And to keep in mind that all of these things affect the markets nowadays, very important to be up and all that. And we'll go over that in detail later. But here's our theme for the Day Traders Action Live Room. What if you could go to work in the morning for two to three hours, have the rest of the day off, a three-day weekend every week, and make up to $300 to $1,000 a day? It's usually averages about 500 to 1,000, and we do that just about every day. You can't win every day, but as I mentioned earlier when we started, I've never heard of any trader in the history of the markets publicly who's a public trader, runs a room or has a service out there that has had 83 winning days in a row. And then again, in last quarter, 2018, 58 winning days in a row. I thought we we're gonna beat my record, but it doesn't matter. It's not a contest. Your only contest in trading is with yourself. But we did have those never before seen in the industry, again, for a public trader. There may be people out that have had that, but they're not doing it in front of the public so that everybody can see it. So you can imagine the kind of capital that they made from our trading signals. I like to tell traders in our Day Traders Action Live room, we sell trading signals. That's who we are and that's what we do. I'm not trying to say that I manage your account or that I tell you what to do or anything. I give you the exact trading signals that are coming up on my system and if you want to take those signals that's entirely up to you. But during that we do track everything very meticulously and um, we allow you to take advantage of those signals for an incredibly ridiculous price of only $39 to start and not only are we, from what I've heard from my hundreds of traders that I have also searching around the industry, as well as my own research, which I do two to three hours every single night. I've been doing that for over 18 years. We are the lowest cost in the industry, only $149 a month. And as far as I know, the most profitable live trading room in the industry. Most profitable and the lowest cost. How's that for a pal? <laughs> so we're trying to help you, especially those of you new. We specialize in new, smaller traders that have a small, you know, five, six, seven thousand dollar account, and they want to come in and become what I call a blue collar working trader. That's right, a blue collar working trader. That's someone who comes to work every day on time because we open at 10 o'clock. You better be ready. I may make a seven, eight point winner right off the opening, so be ready. And uh, we're going to come in there, fire, like I said, fire up our Harleys and get ready for some, some warfare in the markets. And I kind of hate to describe it that way. Unfortunately, that's the way it's become because of all the electronic trading, the, the robots out there, the Fed riggers, the worst of all, the guys who really manipulate the markets big time. So we're going to go out there and do that. Now, keep in mind that I like to describe the uh, market when we trade every day there's usually three conditions that are present and that is we're gonna make our trades and it's gonna be like a flow down the river you know what I mean you get in a nice boat and you get on that quiet lake and it's sunny and the birds are chirping and you just flow down the river other days it's more like an arm wrestling match where I'm trying to maybe fade a, a high like see how the markets climbing up here and maybe I want to fade a, a special high position in the markets where it just keeps going up and up and up and the Fed riggers are trying to jam the market higher so I'll fade that and go short and uh, you know sure enough they keep trying to jam that high without any real reason or anything it just keeps getting jammed up because of their manipulation that can tend to be an arm wrestling match sometimes and sometimes if they're really pushing it it's just a full-on cage fight you can't get a counter trade move because they're not going to let it happen. They're going to try to punish the shorts. And I call that a cage fight with the riggers. And if you don't know 
that these markets are rigged by what I call the riggers or the Federal Reserve uh, uh, fellows, you really kind of you need to learn that because you're trading in a clueless state of mind. Now, in addition to that, what I have over here, this is called a volume meter. And if you don't have a volume meter and you're not watching the volume, that's also very clueless. And again, don't mind anything I say here. We specialize in new traders. I've trained over 50,000 traders in the last 18 years. Much more, I believe, but at least 50,000, just to give you a number. And because we specialize in that, I'm here to help wake up traders that really want to do this business but are working in a clueless state and that's going to cost you a lot of time and money. So the first lesson for today is how to build a volume meter. This is called a volume meter. This is the individual volume and again I use Ninja Trader charts. Love Ninja Trader. Just absolutely fantastic company. <clears throat> we use Ninja Trader charts and I'm powering my charts with eSignal, which is a company that uh, I am also a partner with in addition to Ninja Trader. You can see them up here, Ninja Trader eSignal. I've been using eSignal for over 25 years. Just love them. They recently got bought up by ICE, so they're very reliable data and a very excellent service, as well as Ninja Trader. They're just great, too, and they have their own data feed, too, called Kinetic. Now, the reason I mentioned data feed is because to make a volume meter you're going to need what's called a data feed cert you know a data vendor and that's why how you can make this using uh, in this case a ninja trader chart and uh, we're just running a one minute chart on NASDAQ to get the NASDAQ volume and kinda watching for a sell signal here to see if I can demonstrate a sell signal for you <coughs> I think they're going to take them down a little bit here. I'm kind of watching for, you can see this is kind of goosed up here. Watching for them to falter on the upside here and start to slip a little bit lower. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and test a uh, short trade here right there at that 87 level is what I was looking at. Let's see if 87 here, there's 87 coming in now. Let's see if this is going to, again, get goosed up higher or are they going to let this thing falter a little bit here? Uh, it's looking a little bit like after yesterday's hammering on the downside um, I believe the markets are going to continue to the downside today they should be willing to uh, move lower here so we're gonna see if this exhaustion reversal up here is gonna fade or if the riggers are gonna try to keep jamming it up now this is not official trade don't take the trade or anything it's just part of what we're going to do because we're live here is I'm going to demonstrate some scalps and things today. Hopefully we'll get some opportunities. The market's not too choppy. Fridays are the uh, most, I would say, the probably the worst days for day trading and the most difficult generally. That's the case. So I use these days for our uh, live seminars when we do have these every now and then. See, this is actually the Federal Reserve rig in the markets up here. See all these spikes? Look at this. One, two, there's like a series of spikes and there's one, another one coming in here right at that key inflection point 87. So I'm going to give you a little example. These are these are the Federal Reserve riggers as far as I know. Um, been doing this a long time. They're coming in and artificially jamming a market up that's already overextended here on the upside a little bit and they're not letting it flop back. I do believe it's going to flop back lower, but this was an example of them coming and jamming it. And this is where you'll often get, if they get really serious about jamming that market up <coughs> and you're trying to short against that, it'll be a little bit difficult. So I'm just showing this as a demonstration. We'll get into some live trades as we progress over the next couple hours. Now, one thing I want you to know, this is really important because it's happening now, and that's why we're doing a live seminar. So I'm going to have to speed up a little. See this line up here? This is a key institutional support resistance line, what I call a line in the sand. Now, notice it's very important. If you don't know what that key institutional level line is, 
you're again trading a little bit clueless because that mar is going to be very important now so far they've jammed the price right up to that and they stall it it's backed off prices odds are they're going to try to jam it through that level and we're going to see where they go from there and i, I i'm just getting started with our seminar here our webinar so i have to uh get a feel for the markets and see what they're doing here so far at that key inflection point which in most cases would have dropped off four or five points for a scalp <clears throat> I can see from watching this that the riggers are jamming the market up they're still trying to play the bullish game and um, they're not facing that yesterday's hit was probably and I have to put that in quotes because they have been so relentless pushing this market up lately it was probably the start of the market getting ready to move lower. Now, that may be the case rolling into the Attorney General Barr testimony next week. So keep in mind, if you're going to trade next week, that I believe it's going to be on Tuesday and Wednesday will be the hearings, forget it. It's going to get the market all choppy and whips on. If you don't know that a, a, a major testimony like that is going to cause some market disruption once again you're trading in a clueless state of mind and I'm just trying to help you f instead of blowing out just one account which many of you have already done now blowing out two or three more you got to pay attention and learn from somebody who's been around like myself so you can learn from those mistakes and learn about key tools which I'll show you today in the room now some people say you know that's great what you say uh, where's the proof of that well here's my advice if you are looking for a trading room or anything like that the first thing you want to ask them if they have a trading room is do you have a YouTube channel showing some of your some or all of your live trades most cases some because YouTube you can't record forever right but anyway it's not important because if you're trading for two three four hours a day you know at least have a YouTube channel with some with some things right and you'll be surprised because the vast majority of them I would say 90% or more say nope we don't have that and your next question them them to be as you're getting ready to close the door in their face is why the hell not why wouldn't you have it YouTube's free you could promote your room more but they don't have it because they can't demonstrate their trades live or their trading tools in most cases very effectively well at day traders action boomerang day trader we definitely have a, a recording of our from our room of many many trades here's the day traders action live room by Mohan that's me there and you can see here and don't worry we're gonna go over all this stuff today I'm just slowly getting all this stuff out I want to show you then we'll get into some live action I'm getting a feel for the markets here now and uh, watching for possible lower move coming in here now see if they can get them back under 92 and start smoking this thing down a little bit but you can see here's my recordings from the live trading room and it's not just one or two or five uh, recordings which something is better than nothing but you don't want to see videos that uh, you know they recorded three years ago and then that's all they got on there but look at my my YouTube channel it's loaded with trades now look at this <coughs> you know plus uh, well let me show you see it keeps going got a lot of stuff on here but I'm just scroll back up and show you real quick 11 and a half point trades we do do swing trades not always okay watching for them to break down under 92 to set the market on a lower path here maybe that's gonna happen maybe not they are kinda goosing the market up they're trying to block it from dropping more today but the market should be willing to keep moving on the downside after yesterday's fiasco I think yesterday was a little different than um, most these days usually they come in and goose it up higher again the next day totally artificial and fake but that's what they do and here they come with a big spike candle again this is the Federal Reserve riggers trying to artificially jam the market up above you guessed it the key institutional line see that key institutional line how they're trying to jam it up above it keeps faltering that's a sign that this market may not be that strong anymore and it's ready for a couple of days pullback possibly going into the bar testimonies next week 
I believe it's Tuesday and Wednesday. You'd have to check it out. <clears throat> so look at that, 11 and a half points. We get swing trades. We get scalps, wins, losses, all kinds of stuff in here. 14.75 points. The swing trade, 13 and a half, 22 points. Here's a live recording of me putting on a trade, calling it out exactly, and holding the darn thing. And these swing trades take forever, as you probably can guess, for 22 points. Here's one for 30 and a half points, one for 22.75. Here's a 750 scalp, 14 points. Just giving you an idea here. Uh, we'll get rid of this in a minute here. But I just want to show you all kinds of examples. Short scalp. Five and a quarter points on a highly rigged up session. <coughs> Globalist. Uh, I'm not sure what that was exactly. Uh, grind day on an FOMC minutes announcement session. You know, I give a little description of what the day was like because if you don't know what the underlying bias of the market is like, you're again trading in a clueless state of mind i'm going to show you how to deal with all this stuff today i got one report that'll clear you up on so much of this and all you gotta do is read it for free and it'll clear you right up on all the stuff i'm here to help you and i'm not here to gouge you and uh, waste time by trying to sell you a bunch of stuff i'm going to show you the indicators i use we only have a few of them and they're very very low cost if you want to look into that but uh that's not the purpose of our our webinar I would like you to join our day traders action live room again it's only 39 bucks for the first two weeks it's 149 dollars a month but listen to me carefully do not sign up just for two weeks I don't appreciate that at all there's no point in doing that if you're serious you're serious if you're unserious don't waste your time or mine by being a looky-loo this is a serious business I want to help you learn you're gonna need a couple months in the room to really get it now while you're in the room, keep in mind you're going to earn while you learn because we make an average of five hundred to a thousand dollars a day just on the Nasdaq. Then you have the crude oil, which I'm going to go over with you and show you the winning sessions according to our exact, crystal clear, proven trading method. Now we don't use um, boomerang necessarily I have trades that'll make but I use five different setups there's only one setup for boomerang so we don't use order pending the, um, mini Nasdaq but I do display the boomerang charts and that's just so you can see them operating but I'll call out live trades of a different type see now they're hanging the market up here and they kind of goosed it up and gee what a coincidence right after they're trying to pop over the institutional level line here they're not getting very far but anyway, so I can finish up here, I show you how to trade larger scale moves with Elliott wave pattern and Fibonacci numbers as well. That's for the swing trades only, but I do do that as well. So again, a large amount of trades. If you think of joining another room, be sure and ask me if they have a YouTube channel. And if they don't, which 90% of them don't, your next question is, see you later. It's not a question, it's a statement. See you later. Or before you, as you're leaving the doors, ask them, why the hell not? What's the matter with forming a free YouTube channel and uh, posting, you know, some recordings of your trades? At least that way you can get an example. But they say, oh, no, no, you just have to join our room. It's only 500 a month. <laughs> we just want your money, you know. So caution. This is a, a tricky industry. There's a lot, of, a lot of tricky things going on out there. And we're just trying to help you out. So while you're over there, and by the way, if you're afraid to trade, which I know many of you are, and you like kind of hanging around in the, uh, the day trading and the futures trading services, there's not much that anybody can do to help you with that. You gotta have to just face that you're afraid to trade and just call it what it is. However, being the kind of guy we are, running the room here, running our services, we do have a solution for you. And that is go over to the head, just click on, you know, daytradersaction.com, click on the main logo and just scroll down because down, if you scroll down, what you will see is our trading affirmation section. This is going to really help you out working with trading affirmations. Well, you can start by watching my video shot from beautiful, uh, shot from a helicopter on beautiful 
island of Kauai in Hawaii and uh, I think you'll really really like it it shows um, uh, shows us with trading affirmations flying through the beautiful jungles of Kauai what could be better than that I'm going to turn this down here manifesting a winning traders mindset this is this, for those of you who you like trading and excites you and everything but you're just kind of afraid to trade we're going to show you how to get started in the day traders action room first thing sign up for just 39 bucks plan on staying a couple months and while you're you're doing that and waiting for a monday to roll around when we'll be back in the live action just watch my video here on the magic seven internal and external uh, trading affirmations and you'll get a some really good affirmations you can say to yourself I trade with a proven system with crystal clear calls on market direction position entry stop placement trades management and strong um, underlying confidence and bias reading I realize I create my own luck and fortune by intense study of the markets intense focus on doing the correct things in the market keeping my mind clear of illusions see we're gonna help you getting my fear I love this one trading the S&P 500 is fearless killer high-speed fun yeah like I said we are the hell's angels of the market anybody who joins uh, day traders action get ready for some really high-speed action we don't lie to you and play games we're not gonna make one trade a day if we have a little drawdown we're gonna fight and get it back and more happens frequently not all the time but you know you'd be drawn down a couple points if you have a initially a losing trade or something it's no big deal that's the first thing I want you to do is put on your desk a big sign that says so what who cares no big deal that should be your attitude towards trading day trading and once you have a proven system it should be your attitude towards money and losses you're not there to squabble about pennies if you can't it means you can't afford it shouldn't be in the business remember when I read the affirmate or the uh, risk disclosure initially should be no big deal if you have a lost trade that's part of the business uh, here's my affirmations here's my top 10 favorites things change in the market every day so I'm willing to change too in order to harmonize with the market so you gotta snap out of your you know it's like you take a shower every day right you should well it doesn't one shower doesn't last all week so similarly you need to say your daily trading affirmations for be invent for developing your traders mindset every day I believe and think in terms of possibilities and probabilities I know that by taking every trade that qualifies according to my trading rules the statistics are on my side you got to have a winning system first if you're just winging it and trading and you came to this webinar well I'll pick up a few tips and tricks boy I hate that term tips and tricks might as well just flush your money down the toilet when you see some clown going on there with his website and telling join us till you learn trip ticks trip uh, what is it tricks and tips about the market there's no tricks and there's no tips it's called knowing what the hell you're doing and having a proven winning system I have discipline patience no fear of loss belief in probabilities I trade the market not the money I am a trading machine I am calm focused confident and highly disciplined Do you see what I mean Do you see that feeling you're getting now when you say these every day with confidence you're going to develop that along with a winning system joining our room and having that ability you're going to have a pretty darn decent time I'm going to call the trades for you so that's you don't even have to worry about that right anyway what I'm going to show you now is how to learn how to build a volume meter if you're not being able to glance at this when you're trading and know what the volume in the market is you're trading in a clueless state of mind it's almost as clueless as a guy who gets a brand new car right and he calls his buddies got to his buddies in the car and says let's go on a road trip yeah I got my new roadster here and everybody jumps in the car by the way the riggers you can see they're hanging up the market quick commentary in the market it's almost virtually untradeable because they're coming in today and trying to rig the Dow back up it's got every reason in the world to get hit with more selling but they're coming in rigging it up here notice how choppy it is right above that key institutional level look at that 
they can't quite goose it all the way up that suggests to me that this thing's going to be selling off here probably pretty soon they might try to goose it up again i'm watching for it now odds are they're going to be selling this thing off pretty soon i'm just watching the institutional level here at 77.95 even and i'm also watching 93.50 to break down lower but in the meantime they may try to stage another big goose candle up here see how artificial that is that's not you and me trading this way that's the federal reserve trying to rig up the markets and i know it's disgusting and everything but if you don't know that and you think it's some kind of conspiracy theory or something once again just like the volume meter you're going to need serious help if you want to trade these futures markets you are in a clueless state but i'm going to try to help you i'm watching now to see if we get a downside move on a punch under 93 if we get a punch under 93 there is a chance that uh, this thing could lose ground here but right now based on my experience what i'm seeing here i'm not putting it past that the riggers may try to keep goosing this thing up but if we break them down under 93 we could get a, a long red spike candle taking us potentially all the way down to this 88 level so let's watch for that right now here we go Here's breaking 93 and again uh, a little bit too choppy for it to be short because they might come in here and try to re-goose it obviously they're revealing themselves as being what they do best which is rigging up the markets here so 93 they if they come in spike another goose candle up here we see that they're just up to their old tricks no big deal but it's pretty disgusting I mean Federal Reserve is not even an American company they sort of pose as an American company and uh, but they're not they're not under the rules of uh, the United States government let's see if they can smash this thing down under 93 and get them going on the downside and we'll watch to see if I can get it I, I think we're gonna get a trade signal moving lower but for right now just based on what I just told you watch for a bias towards the downside uh, let's just see they're either gonna goose them up again and try to jam them once again over that institutional number which is currently at uh, 95 right here this this dashed line or the market should be willing to sell off but I don't know some games are being played by the riggers so let's see what happens excuse me so here we go um, volume meter first of all again go to the day trader day traders action site and click on this link here how to read the market like a book now this is a report that I've had up here for a while and this shows you how to you can get this free report and scroll and there goes that watch for a five or six inch red candle on the downside here under 93 that I told you about um, this you see the volume meter here and here now all I'm saying this is the ADX by the brilliant Wells Wilder we no longer use that so if you go to this report you can learn how to make a volume meter through the steps but just skip step number four adding the ADX indicator just keep it simple just a regular per minute volume and there's our six inch candle to the downside on this, the screen here which I forecasted live for you when I called out the riggers I said they were having trouble getting the price over the institutional level probably going to get a large spike to the downside and gee what a coincidence and I even pointed out <clears throat> this gold line here I said they'll probably go right to this 88 gold line level there which was a line I had in there from a previous session I marked the charts with various lines and I they're just for me personally when I'm trading to watch for and uh, so there was a first demonstration of a of the riggers and an underlying bias reading I was giving you see the riggers are pretty pitiful because they've goosed the market up so much and spent so much money doing that they're gonna run into some problems now I believe and so they weren't even able to push it solidly over this institutional level line here that doesn't bode very well for them nonetheless they may try again but if we had shorted this here which I probably would have live in the room I would have basically given you the same commentary I just did we would have been looking for about a four to six point move because this was rather extended here on the upside 
and uh, 93 remember I gave you that key level 93 came down to 86 which would be up to seven points <clears throat> if that had happened if I had called it out live and I'll get some live trades hopefully going that was a semi live deal I called it out in advance I told you why it was happening if you were paying attention if you're multitasking and petting your dog and looking at other sites you're wasting your time here I had asked you when you signed up if you please pay very strict attention over the next few hours you'll learn a lot you'll you really I'm going to show you all kinds of stuff we're just <laughs> we're just getting started don't even <laughs> there's plenty more to go here but uh, please do that for your own benefit not mine um, I just do this because this is what I've been doing for 18 years and I have other things I do in the markets uh, in our live day traders action room by the way uh, so go ahead and read this uh, whole report it'll stretch your head out a little show you how to uh, read the markets like a book how to read the side the sidewalk bias of the markets the airplane what I call a sidewalk bias the air the uh, helicopter bias which is where you're up a little higher looking down on the whole thing <clears throat> and then the airplane bias like when you're flying from LaGuardia and you're looking down at New York and it's just a little spot with a bunch of bright lights <clears throat> you get a different picture of the bias so we show you how to do that here on this report I think you'll really like it more about that later so there was uh, that long a uh, six inch I don't know whatever your screen size is if I had it you know depends on how you know there six inches see <laughs> you know what I meant it was just theoretically you're gonna get a big I meant to say we're gonna get a big spike candle and that was simply because I detected that the riggers were trying to jam this thing up over the institutional level line. They couldn't even pull it off. So I said they're going to hit them. But they're so, uh, you know, shameless. They're still coming in trying to push it back up again. And that's what's causing the choppiness today. The market wants and needs to sell off really strong. It needs to lose about five, six hundred, seven hundred Dow points. But the riggers have got everybody conditioned now that it's a permeable market. It's going to keep going up forever. And, uh, I mean, if you didn't learn from your last time in uh, June, right up until the very, get this, this is the riggers for you, right up to the exact day of Christmas Day Eve, the last day the market's open before Christmas, Right in the day when you're just getting ready to go celebrate your family and everything, they crashed the market so hard, made everybody's head spin. And uh, I'm sure they got a lot of hate mail and everything about that. So what do they do in response? They goose it up all the way back up. <clears throat> Shamelessly goose it all the way back up. And... Uh, <laughs> It's just, it's mind-blowing in my view. It's just like they goose it all the way back up to the to higher highs. And uh, that's just a big whatever, you know? That's all I can say. It's the way the mop flops. But anyway, they're trying to still promote that idea. So here they are back on the institutional level trying to jam that up. So now you know how to build a volume meter. At least I showed you in the report. You can build it with a Ninja Trader chart or any other charting service you have, as long as you have. This is what's called a uh, Valma, a volume moving average. This is the individual volume with the colored candles, whether it's a cell volume or green. And then this is a four period average. I forgot to mention in the report it says eight period, which is okay, but I prefer to use four period now on the volume moving average and mostly all you're going to glance at is this candle here like right now I can see on NASDAQ they're trading an average of 946 uh, contracts that's good strong volume as long as they're above this green line that's strong volume hovering in between is okay but they start dipping under this magenta line on an average that's 250 300 contracts you're getting pretty quiet on the volume and uh, just realize any trade you put on may take a little bit longer to pan out which is fine that's no big deal but just keep that in mind all right so we're watching now for the market to turn back to the downside here 
They're still attempting to goose the institution level here, but they should be willing to start sliding lower. Let's see if we can do that. And watching here to see if 93 once again can hit, get hit to the downside and start moving lower. However, a caveat, and that's based on what I'm seeing in the live action. See, I can speed up your learning curve for you very quickly. Based on what I'm seeing, the excessive amount of whipsaw and choppiness and the rigors attempt to jam this institutional line here, we don't want to go short just yet, even though the chart pattern suggesting a short or downside continuation market, they look like they're trying to play games and jam it up to your next lesson coming right up. If they are successful, what they're trying to do right now is jam this market up to what's called the opening range. Now, if you don't know about the opening range, and this is for any market you're trading, but particularly the ES and the mini NASDAQ, again, no offense, you're trading in a clueless state. Don't take offense. It's just tough love. You Thank God you have somebody here that can give that to you and help you not blow out you know, another account, possibly even Johnny's college fund. Hey, let me tell you, in 18 years of doing this, I've helped thousands of traders, and I've ran into a few guys that, it's always the guys, you know, we got big egos, what can I say? Blew out Johnny's college fund, and he's calling Mohan and crying to me, oh, God, what am I going to do? I go, well, have you told your wife? Whoa, real sheepishly, no. And I go, oh, dear God. First thing tonight, as soon as she comes home from work, sit down after dinner, whatever, and tell her you got to talk to her. Don't lose your marriage over futures trading. What are you, crazy? Tell your wife what happened. Johnny's $50,000 college fund is gone. And don't you dare tell her, but I've got it all handled. I got it all figured out. That's what caused you to lose all it. You don't have a proven system. However, if you want to tell her, However, honey, I've joined Mohan's Day Traders Action Room, and everything's going to be all right now because he makes steady winning trades, so don't worry about it. That you can tell her. I don't mind that, but please don't make any more excuses. Get a proven winning system or stay the hell out of the markets until you do. My suggestion, again, join the Day Traders Action Live Room and let me try to you know, give you some experience so that you can learn how to trade. This is called the opening range. This is the high of the opening range. And this is the low. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly how it's set up, but I'm telling you every day these are very vital pivots. Below the opening range, the market's going to tend to lean weak, especially combined with lean holding generally under the institutional level, which I've already told you about here. And again, in the, if you join the Day Traders Action Room, I'll show you how to set this up on your charts. Not a problem. Now, the opening range, we set that every morning. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. These numbers will scary. They are so accurate, it'll blow your mind. How accurate they be. Now, this market should get hit to the downside and sell off. The riggers seem a little bit desperate to crank it up, but I believe from my homework that the underlying bias is going to send this market packing lower at some point but they're really trying to push it now we're back to that key 93 level and let's find out here if they're going to you know just be so audacious that they're going to try to jam it over this line again and really launch a torpedo on the upside to try to drive the prices artificially back in above the opening range if they get it above this line, that means they're probably going to try to jam it up to the, at least the center of the opening range. And their goal is if they could get it above that, then they could try to show a bullish market again. Well, the market is due to take a hit on the downside over the next week or so. They keep rigging it up. I think it's ready. You saw what happened yesterday. The Dow was down over 240 points in the morning. They goosed it back where it closed at minus one or plus minus 134, and which everybody's like, oh my God, oh the market's selling off. Oh, what are we gonna do? Oh, I mean this is how how mental everybody's gotten over this fake bull market here. We gotta take them down. The market has just been over jammed on the upside, and. Uh, 
today, like I said, the rigors are really present in this market. That's why it's so choppy and virtually untradeable. That's the opening range. It's an astounding uh, set of daily pivots that will blow your mind and give you crystal clear bias readings. A part of the whole picture. The rest is my personal uh, work every night where I crunch 18 proprietary indicators and I show you exactly what the underlying bias of the market should be. Lately we've been in sell rallies mode. Not sell mode, but sell rallies. But look when I blow up the chart, look what they're doing. If you don't believe in the rigors or you just think I'm I'm crazy, which means you're clueless. I'm not crazy, but the point is join the room for a while and you'll see you'll learn all about the rigors. We fight them every day. Look at this. This is completely totally artificial. And where did they goose the prices to? What did I just tell you? They're going to try, because they're riggers, they're going to try to goose the market above the opening range. If they get it above the opening range, then that means they're probably going to try to... I'm squishing the chart together so we got more room. means they're probably going to try to jam it at least up to the center before they falter again. But they're just back up to their old tricks trying to goose the Dow up using the NASDAQ. Now, this is what I call a high five up here. I know there's a lot of information today, but I promise you, you'd learn a lot in this room. And that report I showed you how to read the market like a book shows you about the high five and how to read it. The high five consists of the dollar, the cash, Dow Jones Industrial Average, the dollar composite index, that's the NASDAQ, the dollar transportation index, and the trend which you should learn about, and the all-important advanced decline line, which is shown right here. These are the advancing issues on the New York Stock Exchange. These are the decliners. This is the total. You subtract them out, and you get the net. You can see here the advancers are more than decliners, so you subtract, you get a net advancing 809 issues. This is one of the most important numbers in the entire stock market. If you decide to trade these risky U.S. stock indexes, then uh, you're going to have to deal with the rigors and you're going to have to deal with key indicators that you need to know how to read known as the advanced decline line and some of the others. Now I also have the advanced decline line here posted on NASDAQ because uh, I want to know what both of them are because the NAS, that's our baby, so that's <laughs> I like to know what that advanced decline line is as well. And down below here you have the ESNQYM and then you have uh, dollar index, crude oil, and gold, which I gave a buy signal on gold the other day, two days ago, when it was trading uh, 12.69. We're in a buy mode on the gold now, looking for gold to ramp back up over 1,300, stretch its way up to 1,350, and hopefully, maybe, possibly, you never know, blast through 1,350 this time. We'll have to see. Now, here's a crude oil trade that just set up. Sorry, it's all happening live, so I. When these dynamic trend bands match color, you got a sell channel signal. Now the dynamic trend bands are matching colors, so the signal is right here at 90, and we're looking for a move down to 80, and it kind of jammed right straight down to 80. We're only trading for 10 ticks on crude oil. I like to say 8 to 10 ticks because um, sometimes they'll go and tap 8 ticks, and then we recommend you just dot, jump out because you're going to get an average of five to ten trading signals, sometimes more, a day on crude oil within the first three to four hours of the crude oil markets. Now look at, again, I'm working both deals now. I'm going to show you the exact method later. We're into our first hour of the webinar. It's all being recorded. Don't worry about it. You'll have all this in tape. But I wanted to show you some, and I haven't even got to the indicators yet and stuff like that. We will get to that, but just uh, Please be a little patient with me here as I try to do this all right and get this all out systematically for you. So, again, you've seen my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, quick side check to the question and answer. Stephen, yes, you can use uh, Sierra Charts. Excellent charting system. You can use Sierra Charts and set up uh, a volume meter, I believe. You'd have to check and see if you have a volume moving average indicator. But again, to understand 
And once we get out of our 10 ticks on crude oil, by the way, I could care less where the market goes after that. Let them keep running. I could care less. Let them go down, you know, three three even handles, you know, down to 40. I, I could care less. I really, when you're day trading and you have a system, by the way, our crude oil system, please listen carefully to this. If you hear nothing else at this seminar, please listen to this. Our boomerang day trader system, which is my world famous software used by thousands of traders around the globe on crude oil, which is the only contract we recommend right now for boomerang. They're using it all over Europe on the Euro stocks and everything like that on Forex and everything else. But round the clock crude oil trades, boomerang has 90% winning trade signals. The only system in the history of the stock market. Did you hear that? The only system in the history of the stock market that I've ever seen in 33 years of trading and being in this business that has a proven, because we track it every day, 90% winning trade signals on crude oil. You're not going to get much better than that. Actually, the ratio is higher, but I just, if I start saying 95% or 97%, everybody's going to get all upset because that's just how traders are. They're mental, you know, and a little neurotic from losing a lot of money and refusing to find a proven winning trading system. Think about it. They're upset and neurotic from losing money all the time, but they refuse to purchase, in our case, a boomerang, a very, very low cost. They refuse to purchase or learn a proven system. So I can't help you with a neurosis like that, but I can help you by offering you proven winning system. Well, the good old Federal Reserve riggers came in here spending some money. Now, they're not going to trade on our mini NASDAQ contract. They could blow it up in one move. They're trading either up on the cash markets, buying baskets of NASDAQ stock, or on the dark pools. That's right. The dark pools do exist. I can track them here in the Day Traders Action Live room. The dark pools, they can execute orders that aren't even reported for up to an hour later. However, they will affect the markets as soon as those purchases are made. Say they buy 50,000 op put options. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Or, or they buy on the futures market 50,000 contracts. They, they're not going to be able to do that on our uh, mini NASDAQ, just to give you an idea. So these are, this is the high five here. And I don't mean to be flipping around all over. I'm not doing it on purpose. It's just I'm trying to get everything available to you. You'll have a video of this so you can watch it uh, whenever you want and you can learn from it. I'll post it on our Boomerang Trader site. Let me show you where that is, by the way. More stuff, I know. This is my site for Boomerang Day Trader. Now, I have the Day Trader's Action site, which I showed you before, that report how to read the market like a book. I have another blog, the boomerangtrader.com. Now, under Resources is where you'll see this webinar posted. And I'm going to keep it up there perpetually. And we have all of our key stuff posted here for Boomerang. Here's the four-step confirmation process, which I'm going to go over with you in a few minutes on crude oil, and I'll show you the winning trades on crude oil. You have a videotape of that exact process here, and you'll have me recording it today, and you can go over that. In addition to that, here was a recent audit that we did of a two-week crude oil period. It's from 2018. It's a little older, but it doesn't matter. It's always the same. It's the same old routine with crude oil and everything. Truthfully, 95% winning trade setups. I go over in extreme detail every single trade setup over the two weeks. So there's a lot of information on here. The only indicators we have at this point right now is we have Boomerang Day Trader. I'm not making a living off of selling indicators. They're the lowest price in the industry. So I do have a few, though, that we use in the room. You probably noticed it here on the crude oil chart. See this here? Gee, what a coincidence. If you want to try to catch a runner, see the price pressure bands here across is under. This was a recent example. That's why we do these live webinars. 
Now notice the price pressure bands. One of the rules for these trades is, it's real simple. Are, once you get a sell signal, I'll go over this trade and I'll show you how a runner could have panned out. You get a sell channel. That's what that arrow is up there. It's alarmed and marked on the chart. You don't do anything until this candle closes. Once this candle closes, it'll lock down the arrow in the chart. I could go back to this chart a year from now, and this exact configuration will still be on the chart if you can bring that up on the Ninja Trader archives. Right? So the first question you ask after the candle closes is has the price pressure bands open? That's these bands here. That's an invention of mine. They look sort of like Bollinger bands, but I invented these. And the price pressure bands open means on the down, we're looking, we're in a sell channel, so we want the dashed line to cross under the solid line. That's called open the price pressure bands. The answer is yes. And then the final question in the confirmation process is see these bands here? This is dynamic trend band number one, dynamic trend band number two, the solid one. We ask, have the dynamic trend bands crossed under, see how they're crossing under here in the case of a sell channel, or crossed over, let me find a buy channel, they don't have one here, selling, crude oil is selling off like mad today, so <laughs> no buy channels to quickly show you. Or are they crossing over, well here's a small example, on the upside, okay, so are they crossed over or under? Are they within two ticks of crossing over and under? In other words, once you have a, a matching color dynamic trend band number one with the cell channel, is it within two ticks of crossing over? Like if I put my cursor up here, see that 88 on the right there? And I move it up to the dynamic trend band number two, and I see 91. That's three ticks, so it's got to be a little tighter. You can eyeball it, but generally you want to just grab the cursor and quickly measure it. So have they crossed over or under? Are they within two ticks of crossing over, or are they matching color? Any one or both or all of those conditions permissions you, according to the system, because this is not a hey, let's wing a trader, I got a gut feel. No, it's the system permissions you, you may now enter your trade. And that's called discipline. And the, if you learn to trade boomerang day trader on crude oil with military discipline, which I'll train you for free every day live in the room with the live charts running like we're doing now, you can then trade off my charts in the room as a free bonus gift. We're already the lowest cost in the industry, but as a free bonus gift, I started posting the crude oil charts and I train you exactly how to use the method and you can make, we average about $500 to $1,000 a day per contract, only based on one contract. Now our track record on mini NASDAQ, we base it on a small account a blue collar working trader account with four contracts. And we show you how to build up to that, to build the confidence, and get yourself cooking up to that level. So here's the dynamic tra or the price pressure bands. I'll tell you what, if you purchase these, they're only 195 bucks, and you put these, you have to have Ninja Trader, and you put these on any chart you're using, you will get astounding improvement in your results no matter what. You don't have to buy boomerang. I'm saying just put the price pressure bands on and you will be shocked. Here's the price pressure bands here. You can click here and watch a, a seminar just on how to trade with those. 195 bucks. There's a link in there on PayPal and that's what keeps us you know running a business you can't run a business for free anybody who runs a business for free is not in business they're giving it away free there's no money there's no business traders for some odd reason they want everything free I run into this over the years and I think what's the matter with you you want to become a doctor go ask them for free eight years of med college for Christ's sakes give me a break there's no free education that's worth anything. 
in futures trading of course except for today's <laughs> live boomerang and day traders action webinar I admit that's worth a lot and it's free today but I'm simply inviting you to join our room earn while you learn let me demonstrate all these to you in live well check this out so here's the signal because why why is there a signal here a little quiz for you there's a signal here on this yellow dot which is boomerangs amazing immaculate accuracy we show you exactly where to trade but on this yellow dot and if you miss that one this one here why is that a sell signal that's right that's exactly right because the dynamic trends bands are matching color you see the number two here the the solid one in the dash dotted line they're matching color now there's another one in the middle of here I'll get to that later that's called the the Cobra but I'll get to that later for right now don't worry about it see that they're matching color therefore you go short here at the market you open up your I got some trades left over I haven't cleared them out yet oh well you open up your trading platform a chart trader is all you need on on ninja trader buy at the market sell at the market when they run up and tap that you'll see the price marker of the price in here come and merge right up into the signal line price bar you just hit your sell right on that yellow dot and they come down for 10 ticks that's normally what we're looking for that's the proven winning system scalps for 10 ticks however with the price pressure band open notice this look how it held even right there just a little bit but then it went back under and you had red candles everything was red and look how it stayed open all the way look at that I I'm not making this up I'm gonna fatten this up a little bit here so you can see it here's the price pressure bands open Here's the matching dynamic trend bands. Here's the pullback the signal line with the matching colors. 6290. Here's the price pressure bands open and they're open and they're open all the way to the exact bottom. Do you see that? Now, in addition to that, you can see this indicator below it that I have posted this is called the price momentum indicator and you can see it getting getting really heavy hammering on the downside here starting to get into the exhaustion area down here it makes a second level trade like big moves often do but you had you combine this with the price pressure band and you could have theoretically picked off the whole move almost to the exact bottom before when they opened up or they closed on the sell side they bounced up a little bit then they opened up again because this crude oil is relentless on the selling today I don't know what happened in the Middle East or whatever but hey America's the largest producer now of crude oil and uh, natural gas especially but anyway that gives you a demonstration like I promised I would on the price pressure bands and the boomerang trading method on crude oil now I'm gonna go over all the trades because we're gonna be here for another hour or so I'm gonna go over all the trades but I want to make sure and cover all these important points let me turn this chart now on the Nasdaq I want to show you something else here now by the way remember what I said earlier and this is why it's the market's virtually untradeable with you remember when I said the riggers are really active today they've screwed the markets up completely you can't trade this market practically you would be standing aside mostly because of the insane whipsaw and I told you at first when we were starting to push the institutional level line which most of you never heard of but we will show you in the day traders action room how to put that on your charts and I said probably gonna be a six inch candle spike well I've shrunk the charts up and that's exactly what we got right so you heard me call that live very challenging though for these bulls here that are all convinced oh they're gonna recover the market again here well good luck with that the Dow's only up five points 
Not how's that working out, perma bulls? Not very good. And how did those perma bulls feel here when they thought for sure they're going to jam this up into the opening range and smoke them up to the center line? Clunk, out they go. Stopped out. Well, right in here, we were talking before I went over to crude oil and started showing you other things. I said, they're going to probably try to jam it up into the opening range and probably eventually try to jam it up to the center because they're desperate riggers and they just want to keep the game going of the fake bullish period in the markets right now. Well, lo and behold, they, they had this pullback. They got them going here. And we were talking and watching this at the time. They jammed this thing straight up with three artificial spike candles, probably done on the dark pools, <coughs> not on mini NAS. <coughs> Excuse me, mini NAS. My voice sometimes, because, you know, I'm talking fast, a lot of stuff. Don't mind. In fact, let me take a quick sip of water. I'll be right back. So instead of running an honest market, letting it sell off, the Federal Reserve riggers decided to jam this up, just like I said, above the opening range. They got hit with more selling because there's a lot of sellers building up in the markets. And I said, well, they're still, if they jam it and hold it above the opening range, they're probably going to try to jam it up to the red center line. Well, gee, what a coincidence. They got hit with selling again. So what is their response? It's always called default to fraud. They just can't seem to run an honest market and let it sell off. So they default to fraud and they stage one, two, three, four spike candles, <clears throat> driving it up again. Then they bring in some more. And right now, as we speak, they are jamming it exactly up to the center of the opening range. My view here is that this is going to falter and uh, have some problems. Okay. I would like to consider that we could try to take a trade up here with the failure of the center line. Now, they're so audacious. Oh, now they're all proud of themselves. They got the Dow goosed up. But the Dow is low, remember. They're using NASDAQ to jam this market up. <clears throat> anyway, it's not that important, but I'm going to watch to see if we get a, a sell signal up here. I'm going to take a sell and we might get stopped out, but that's no big deal. Uh, let's give it a sh I want to try to give it a shot right here around 10.50 to 11. Order 10 pending. Get a little bit jam up towards 10 or higher. There it is. So order, go order filled. Right I'm going to do a live trade right now. We just got short. 10.75, 10 half. There was an 11 print, so we're going to take the lower print. Now, again, the riggers are in a real goosey mood here, so I don't know that the price is going to come down. I just want to do a live trade. I believe they should be willing to back off here and start moving lower. So we've got, I saw, saw 11 print, 11 and a half, and 11 and a quarter when I took that trade. So we'll take, uh, or 10 and a quarter, we'll take the one in the middle, which is 10.50. Okay, now again, they're in a real goosey mood. Normally, I wouldn't even short here. This is an area of great interest for shorting. However, they might run a spike candle straight up and try to stop us out. I'm watching a mental stop up around 14, and they may just jam it there. But in a perfect world, they're going to break them down under 10 and smoke this thing down. I'm targeting an estimated area of uh, 10, 10 half where we're short from. Getting hit probably down to 7802 is where I'd be looking for a short. And you can see that's starting to work out now. So I'm going to, you, you saw where we got short, right? 10 quarter. It's actually just below this red line. So I won't add another line in there. Watching for this price to get hit t down to at least 05. But they may come in and try to stage another goose ramp up because they're just really desperate to rig this market up. Let's see if they can knock them down to 05 to cover up this short. Now, if they go jamming them back up to 10 or 11, then it's, you know, they're just ridiculous. It's just the riggers out of control on steroids. Let's see if we can smack them down. Key level right now is 650. 650 busting down. 
probably get a fast move down to 5. If we bust 650 and smack them down to 05, that's where we'd probably look to cover up the short. Let's see if they can take 650 out and ram them down to 05 to close out this trade here for a little bit above 5 points. That's the target right now. Let's see if we can get them going or if the riggers are going to come in and try to stage another ramp up. They might. Wouldn't surprise me. But let's just, uh, you've seen so far that we have made a couple points, but I'm looking, this should be able to easily drop back lower, at least, I'm guessing, down to 02. And again, this is uh, a live trade called out live on a real heavy rigging day. So again, you're getting to get a taste of how the riggers operate and what I'm talking about when I'm referring to them. Let's see if they bust them out. They should be able to bust this out under 650. If they do, they should be able to collapse them under 5. If we do break 650 here and we get a hard, fast collapse under 5 because of all the excessive rigging that I'm seeing by the, by the riggers, I would probably close this trade out on a break down under 5. Although technically, I do expect they can make their way down to 0 7803 uh, uh, in a perfect world. 7803. So for fun, we'll just hang out with this trade a while. Let's see if they break them down under 06. Now, 650, remember I told you that's a key number? Gee, what a coincidence. They just double tapped 675, and now they're trying to bounce them a little bit. Gee, what a coincidence. That was the exact number, one tick above the exact number I gave you. Let's try to bust 650 again, smack 650 down, get them going under 6, ideally get a selling pile on and smoke them down under 5, trying to reach down to that 3, or because of that pivot number at 650, don't be surprised if the riggers come here and stage another big spike candle on the upside and force us out of the trade. Either way, we get a good demonstration of a live trade, which we're already seeing now. We got some profit in it. But I'm going to hold for 03. But if we get a big spike up, then you'll go, aha. See, that would actually be more important if they did that. You'd go, I see what Mohan's talking about here. These riggers, they don't care about us. They just want to manipulate the market up so they can keep everybody bullish so that when they pull the rug out, they can make more money. See, if everybody starts getting short here, they won't be able to make as money, much money on the crash like they did in October leading right into, that's right, Merry Christmas. Christmas Eve day, the last day the markets were open half day, they just squashed it. Straight, straight squash all the way down. Bam. Absolutely heartless, these riggers. So anyway, that's the scoop on that. Not a big deal. Like I said, I almost wish they had jammed them straight up with a big green spike candle or whatever so you could see the riggers operating. They're really active today. That's all I'm telling you. I probably, if we were open today in the day traders' action room, I probably wouldn't even be trading the, the uh, mini NAS today. It's too treacherous. It's too much rigging. Really excessive. <clears throat> anyway, so let me show you some of these... Uh, <clears throat> uh, crude oil trades but the thing is I got to watch the market I want to be successful on this trade right now I'm holding thinking that the riggers are going to back off maybe at least a little they're so act active today I don't know and there they go ramping them straight back up right to our entry completely ridiculous completely fake and phony but that's the riggers for it. Doesn't mean we have to get out necessarily. Like I said, I had mentioned 14 as a mental stop. I had mentioned, I think, 12. Let's see if they can bust that 650 down again, take a second stab at it, and smash this thing down. It deserves to go down to 03. Teach these riggers a lesson, like that earlier smash that I called with the, remember the six inch candle call? <laughs> you know, let's see if they can. Uh, hit this thing back under 650 but you notice how 650 is becoming what I call a sticky number it's because of the excessive rigging they're not decisively breaking it 
and they may try to launch an upside spike candle any time. Oh, gee, what a coincidence. There it is. See, the riggers are on steroids today because of yesterday's market getting hammered. They're trying to keep propping it up. And it's embarrassing, but that's just the way it is, you know. So exactly what I said would happen, they did. How did I know that? Because I saw the stickiness of 650 there. See? See the double tap there, 675? Right at the exact number I gave you. I knew that number, right? You heard me call it out in advance. And, uh, yeah, we could have scalped four points here, and that's normally our scalp. But it actually, and I prefer, I told you I preferred that so you can see a live demonstration of how I call out the riggers. And they came right, we're still in the short. We haven't got out yet, but you see how they came right back in at that literally triple tap at just under seven, spiked it back up. I still think they're going to hit them, but there's a lot of games being played here by these rigger clowns. So let's see if we can break them down <coughs> again, maybe, but I don't know. It's a little hard to say. A little hard to say. But let's see if we can break them down again back under 650. If we do, it's a big if right now. Because it's Friday after that big drop yesterday. And they're doing everything they can to prevent the market from getting hit again. Although that's the destiny of this market. To lose at least another five to 700 Dow points. I'm guessing that that, that Mueller testimony next week may have something to do with it. So it's not necessarily going to happen today. Although it could, I think uh, we're going to see some fireworks next week in the market. So right now, this is called, remember a little quiz for you. What were the three conditions I named earlier for the market? A little quiz for you. That's right. A flow down the river on a beautiful day on a boat. Birds are chirping. That's those are days we have many many days like that where I go in and I scalp two three points or two or three trades. We make our target goal on mini NAS is eight to twelve points every day, on a small blue collar working trader account, that'll produce a five hundred to thousand dollar paycheck. When we achieve that paycheck, we stop trading, and there's been many many times where that occurs in the first half an hour of the room. We're done. I don't play games. I learned that from the floor traders. You make your paycheck and you stop trading. You get your butt out of the way of all that risk. And you get out of the way and you go home with your paycheck and you come in tomorrow and you do it again. They're testing 650 again. Let's see if they bust the thing, smash it under 650 and smoke them straight down to 03. Wouldn't that be great if that happened? Because then you got a chance to see the riggers coming in here on a weak shot trying to jam it up. They only got it up as high. Well, they might try again. Don't don't get me wrong. They only got it up to 1150, which put our trade in a one point deficit. And they may try it again because they're riggers and they just it's very childish, but that's the only way they can seem to react to the markets is keep a perma bull market going. Well, I'll tell you a secret. And I don't want to upset you, but you probably already know this or should. America's bankrupt. So right now, this all the the reality of that soaked in, and kicked in, last week a lot stronger than most know from my what I'm getting from my inside insiders, and so now that's one reason why they're goosing the market up so hard here, is because. It just became really apparent to everybody that you know, on the inside that America's bankrupt. Period. Now you say, oh no, everything's still running and the government's open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I know. But if you have a million dollars in the bank, people say, wow, he's rich. He's got a million dollars in the bank. See, look what I'm talking about here. Went right down to 650 again, and they tried to stage another goose job. Same exact crap. The spike candle. This is very good. I, I said I preferred this because... We're still technically would be holding short, but I prefer this. Why? Because it gives you a chance to see what I'm talking about the riggers. I'm de I detected them earlier and I pointed it out to you. 
I pointed out where they were rigging, what levels they were rigging. I talked about the red line. I talked about the opening range. I talked about the institutional level line. All these are available in my day traders action room. I'll show you how to put them on your own charts. All you got to do is sign up. It's only 39 bucks. And don't sign up if you're just going to stay for two weeks and learn this and leave. Uh, I want you in there long term so I can really do this with you every day and help you really earn while you learn. But the point is, is that uh, <clears throat> I detected the excessive rigging earlier, which often happens after a down day. They come back in and they go, oh, we don't want people to lose confidence in our fake market. So we got to rig it up again. We don't want them to start finding out that America that we bankrupted America by all the you know pork spending and the, the the fraud use of funds such as the hello the Mueller report, which is a big report next week. Nothing was wrong, but we spent a year and a half or whatever it was, and millions and millions of your dollars, yours and mine, doing this artificial thing. Now we're wasting more having this testimony and all that because. It's just America it loves to waste money, I guess. But so the point is, is um, we're still in this trade. We're back to our entry. Let's see if they go down to 650 again. If they go down again, odds are they'll bust it. Because you know what? You know what the slogan is? Third time's a charm. <laughs> Have you ever heard that before? Third time's a charm. So if they go back down there. But back to my question, I know I'm flipping around a lot It's because there's lots going on. Back to my question, so what is this call that we're doing here now? Is this a flow down the river from our 1050 short? Hardly. It's not, there's 14 now, so I probably would have knocked them out there for a small stop. They're just playing games. The riggers are just playing games. You know what they're trying to do now? They're trying to build it up and then they're going to run a goose all the way up to try to jam the market above the top of the opening range. It's pretty apparent that's what they're trying to do. They're going to try to jam it artificially up to the top of the opening range. Then we'll probably have a bigger sell-off from up there, but it's really disgusting. I'm sure you can see why I say that. Do you, do you see real buyers in here? No. Sellers were trying to come in on three occasions under 650 to hell, sell them. They coming in with these big spikes, causing these spikes. Again, trading on the dark pools and probably putting on baskets of NASDAQ stocks in the cash market. And that jams the index up. How did I know this was all going to happen? I just detected it. I've been doing this so long, I detected it. So I can show you how to do that as well in the live room. And uh, you'll get really good at this. But if you don't even know the market's rigged, you just think it's going up and now it's going down, it's going to be rough. You're, you're going to lose a lot of money. So if I can, I'll be very happy within myself if I can help prevent that for you. See, so now they're just climbing a wall of worry. Oh, don't worry, the market's up again. Don't worry, everybody. You know, just keep investing your money in it. We need your money in there so we can take it away. If you don't put it in there, we can't steal it away by crashing the market on you like we did right into Merry Christmas. I wanted to bring up that chart. Where the heck is that thing? I try to be very thorough in the day traders action room. And we got some time. I mean, I, I hope you don't mind. I told you this seminar was going to last two to three, four hours today, maybe, maybe as much as four at the Q&A. You want me to show you some live stuff and demonstrate all this? Look at, here's a uh, E-mini S&P chart. Okay. Now, by the way, in the room, we also make live uh, longer-term forecasts and directional calls, and I sometimes will trade options. Sometimes I trade um, ETFs, those kind that you know, our inverse ETFs. Well, we placed a trade in October. I have it listed here where we used inverse, inverse ETFs for shorting the market. I'll find out. I don't want to spend a lot. Here it was. 
get 1017. Yeah, SCO. We used SCO, which was the inverse short. 1017. I'm going to show you in relation to this chart. 1017 is where I shorted the market. So, and I told everybody get out of stocks, sell three fourths of your stocks. It was right here. 17 was my note said. So it's right in the, they had already lost ground. I actually thought it was early, but it, you know, I have to be thoroughly on it. My notes say 1017, so it's right around this period. And it was actually right on this blue line. See that blue line? That was a severe topping line. They, you know, they made a natural kind of sell off here, a little bit kind of heavy. I was talking about it all up into late September, into October. I said, we're going to need to. I started telling everybody up here to get out of stocks and put on you know hedges and then here I officially said we're gonna go short the market because they'd already crashed gave me a little impetus they rebounded go short the market with at symbol SEO which is an inverse short fund and they moved them down substantially lower from 28,000 on the Dow down here to 26,000 home just a little bit above that and we captured this much with the SEO and made about 48%. That's all I was looking for. I don't really make super long-term forecasts, not what I'm interested in. But notice, after we got out of that, made our approximate 50% on those ETFs, they goosed them back up to this blue line, brought them down again, re-goosed them back up there like a seesaw. And then they goosed them all the way down. Well, they hit them really hard on the downside. And again, this was the big crash that occurred. So I didn't catch all this. I'm not saying I did. But we did catch with the inverse funds a nice 50% gain in a relatively short period of time. That would have been from around the 17th to around the 29th. So whatever it was, 10, 12 uh, trading days, no big deal. Then they hit them really hard. But here's what I want to show you. Look at this. Merry Christmas. Right in the last day the market's open, they just slaughtered the market. This is the Fed riggers for you. They don't care about anybody but themselves. They were short, and they slaughtered the market right into Christmas. That For the added bonus of making sure you had a nice, happy Christmas, losing 30%, 40% of your portfolio on all the stocks that up here, they kept jamming and jamming and jamming the market up. No rhyme or reason for it, but that's what they kept doing because they wanted you to buy and get long as you can. Anyway, they got so much hate mail, and the president was telling them to quit raising interest rates. They're, they're not very bright people. That's why he's trying to appoint some new people in there. And there's all the, the friction with that because it's not an American company, technically. But... They're wiggling it around. We'll see what happens. But So here's Christmas Eve. I'm just showing you the daily charts here. <clears throat> Show you something I want you to see. So here they are. Not going back to right around here where the Fibonacci 0.618 retracement would be. A normal market would have rebounded up here, flopped back lower, consolidated, and moved up or down. Either continued down or consolidated and moved up right in this area with the Fibonacci number. Oh no, not these guys. <clears throat> they're going to keep pushing it and they're going to just rig the thing to the moon. And they rigged it all the way back up to this line, which you remember that's where we had um, made that 50% of the pull. They brought it back up into this and now just the daily charts here look like our, our uh, NASDAQ charts right now. They're just goosing it up relentlessly above this line which was a key number and that was the all-time high and they're just ramo jamming it now up over the all-time high how do you like that it's totally artificial that's what they're doing some call it a melt up yeah you know 
arguably that's what it is and the person who called it the only one i know steve sugarroot brilliant guy i have his new i've had his newsletter for 20 years long time person i know and i don't always agree with him but boy he was right on the melt-up but remember he and he's not saying this he got stopped out along the way of his melt-up call because he was in early on his melt-up call and he got stopped out at one point and got back in or just kind of reconfigured whatever and I drew this red line here because if you look on this big goose upside candle which occurred just a few days ago look at the volume shrinking right here but still as of today nonetheless they keep trying to goose it over this level very suspicious looking chart in my view and what are they doing right now they're still playing games the riggers are still playing games won't let it sell off today the normal market has a sell-off day and it has one or two sometimes up to five follow-up sell-off days this thing is so over bloated and these riggers just won't let it go and uh, trading's virtually impossible today we probably wouldn't have traded today because of the look say we open the room today and, and Fridays are the worst days for trading generally okay so they after the we, we might have had a long trade off the opening here and, and caught some of the upside the jam and jam here's that six inch candle thing I've had forecast live here in the room today or in the seminar jammed them up here again I said they're gonna if they they, they failed to get them above this institution line so I called for a, a six inch candle lower means a big crunch of sellers that's what came in I then said uh oh here they go again they're trying to force them above the um, institutional level line in the sand if they do they're gonna probably get them up in the opening range with three they did it with three spike candles goose it up into the opening range I'm not just trying to show you my forecasting Billy but I'm also trying to show you it's based on my knowledge of the riggers and the games that they play so they dropped them back again a few more sellers and I go if they stabilize them above the opening range which it looks like they're gonna do then they're gonna reach for the red line center of the opening range and then just recently I said if they hold above the red line they're gonna try to go for the uh, the top of the opening range I don't know if they'll make it but they're gonna try and as you notice the markets virtually not trading it's all just straight up garbage mostly big spiky candles which means it's not you and me buying it's somebody with a lot of money creating these big spike candles gee I wonder who so sure enough when they got above this level they pushed it straight up to the center backed it off a little got them back over and now they've made a feeble attempt at trying to get up the top but it's a it's a market that needs to lose at least 500 to a thousand Dow points over the next week and they just keep putting it off and playing games and so you can see it has literally made trading virtually impossible today yeah, it's all right it's no big deal I mean and technically we would still be holding short because when we go short I mentioned 14 so I might have got us out there but I say might have because I wasn't putting my full concentration in this trade if I was I probably wouldn't have even taken it or I might have scalped that lower move we got the only reason I'm saying that is not to be a would have should have could have type person I'm just saying I'm running this seminar today I detected the riggers and they're still playing games so it, I knew trading on the sell side would be a little bit difficult and I know f that I would have shorted that crunch when they failed to get over the institutional level this this big the six inch candle deal I would have managed to get short here and we would have probably scalped four to six points on that and again I'm not trying to say it in hindsight but I hope I'm proven to you based on what you're seeing that that is what can be done now I think we're going to start moving lower here so theoretically um, well I'm just detecting some stuff here 
that suggests they should be able to start moving lower. So let's mark 1350 up here as a a possible short. Assuming we got out on that last one of the four point loss. And again, not a good day for trading because it's today is the riggers on steroids. They're just absolutely acting like nut jobs. Estimated area for pullback would be around here. And that's because of the they're getting the market nice and kind of gross, but what I call constipated right now. They're just it's a guy who's had two pizzas and some more buds come over and they come over with three large pizzas in hand. <laughs> and he says, Here have some pizza, bud. They didn't know. They missed the early part of the party. They didn't see that he already had shared, you know, two huge pizzas with uh, other you know what I'm saying. That guy's got a problem. And so if indeed the market is as constipated as it looks to me right now, I don't know. The riggers are really, really relentless today. They have this idea that they got to recover that 100 points from yesterday. And they may try for that later. But you can see it virtually makes... Uh, makes the markets almost untradeable today. And that just happened to be one of those days. Anyway, it gives me a good chance to uh, demonstrate stuff to you and show you at least today, if you don't understand or at least see the proof that the riggers are out there, you're going to really struggle trading. Now, some of the real newbies once in a while on a deal like this will say, we, why don't you just buy? Oh, really? You want me to buy them right here at the top? That might end, end up panning out, but the answer is not just buy. You're trading the future market. And I know that's a person who doesn't trade because you don't just buy them. You have to know where, how. You have to have specific setups. See, look what they're doing. Even though I tried to, you know, a trade that should be willing to sell off, they're still goosing it. They're, looks like they're probably going to try to reach them up to that top of the opening range. They just appear really desperate for that. And it's kind of embarrassing, but that's not f for me. I mean, for them, that, that they they just can't come out and confess that America's bankrupt, so we're artificially jamming the market up so that you think everything's Jim Dandy. It's what I call putting a lollipop in the mouth of the public. Okay, we got a lot of problems. Okay, well, we'll just goose the market up with a big artificial spike candles and uh, everything will be fine then because they won't complain because their 401ks are up an extra couple percent do you see anyway it looks like it's almost red candle to the downside time again but they've just kinda got the market in an iron vice grip right now but let's see if we get that uh, let's see if we get that drop going here I don't know it's hard to say all right so what have I not shown you so we can move on with our webinar you got my report my free report on how to read the market like a book it'll stretch your head out don't mind but that's good for you because um, you really want to learn how to trade this is a very good place to start in our day traders action live room read this report yeah see look what they're doing now they're just going ballistic it's just the fed riggers there's nothing bullish about the market you know the ADD lines arguably 986 900 is a starting bull type reading it's a good reading but uh, <clears throat> you can see they're just artificially jammed the market up rather than let it flow back to the downside a little. Now the example I often give before I say that, so read like a book, go over to Trading Live with Mohan and sign up for our Day Traders Action Live room. Continue this education every day for a uh, couple months. You'll, you'll walk away. A new trade will be totally worth your time and your money. We're only in the room a couple hours a day. 
we usually hit our target goal I'd say 90 percent of days are winning days for us where we make 500 to 1,000 a paycheck according to our track record and methods that we use and uh, then we have the crude oil trades and uh, all my commentary and the education that you'll get so again when you're trading like this you, I can't prevent the riggers from doing this there's nobody can do that they're all the sellers out there want to sell they're blocking it you see you get a little red in there and they just bury them and that the purpose of that is because they're riggers <laughs> number one because they're riggers now that may be that may in in underlined in quotes may have been a topping area right here I'm getting the feeling that that might have been a possible important top in this deal here so I'm just gonna leave that 1350 in there but a little bit questionable as to what's going on now there was there is this yellow line that I put in here the opening range top is way up there their goal would be to get it up above 22 and that way they can create an artificial Dow up 80 to 90 and everybody go oh ho, ho, everything's just Jim Danny we don't have to worry the feds got our back if you're saying that that is scary because the fed doesn't care about your back the Fed only cares about its own back anyway I think that might have been a topping area it's going to take a long time because of the excessive rigging but let's see if the market starts to falter here and if so I'm forecasting if it can falter which means right now they, we'd have to see that price move back under 11 we have to see it move back under 11 so um, and if we do I'm forecasting let me see here or target filled forecasting a move order order filled if we can trade back under 10 to 11 I'm forecasting a move Let's see here well I show this yellow line here at 06 I think it could be bigger than this but this is pretty substantial I think this is still the correct forecast area where they would if we were going to day trade this and it ends up panning out and they don't try to re-rig it again it would be um, down to this 0650 level anyway just just a thought but I don't know they're they're so rip snorting artificially rigging this thing up today unlike we've seen in the, the last few months there's been a couple days like this today I've never seen such desperation and that's because the Margaret's down a little they feel obliged that they have to goose it up again but a, no, a normal market does not trade that way if you get a heavy hit like yesterday you get a f rebound today follow up lower move normally like in a normal market which it, they don't have those anymore today would be down about 150 200 points right now in other words the sell side had continue to get pressured but they've got everybody hypnotized that it's a permeable market so people's response some of you maybe even in the room will go no 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 you you don't understand this is like a really bullish market but that's not I've been in bullish real bull markets and they have tremendous pullbacks and then they go up again or they have the normal always a series of two to three day pullbacks I can draw up a chart and go back and show you 2009 was a real bullish period after the 2008 phony banker bailout that's what they called it banker bailout remember that it wasn't what it was that was called fund the rigger rigging rooms <laughs> anyway watching for that six inch candle now if you join the room I'll tell you the story I do tell it on occasion so this deal here it only moved five points against us no big deal let's see if they can break 1350 down I am forecasting a move down to close back under this red line eventually and then smash them down all the way down 
to this 06 to 07 zone. Let's see what happens. However, again, it's not an excuse. It's just that the riggers are so out of control and desperate today, I don't know if they'll let him sell off. Maybe. Would be nice. Love to see it. But I don't know. Right now, let's see if they can just break him down under that red line to start. And we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so this is... Uh, I've talked to you about the institutional key level, the opening range, the underlying bias reading of the markets, and I want to go over now the only system in the history of the U.S. markets, or any markets that I've heard of. Of course, I'm not European, so no. Sorry about the crude oil, by the way. There's another signal there. I had it held over, but I'm not trying to... We're not running the room. In the room, everything's all in sync and running, but I just got to sidetrack so I'm trying to run the seminar here. Here's a crude oil trade signal. Let me show you how this one worked then I'll go over all the trades so far today. There'll be a bunch of them. Here's a sell channel. So little quiz for you. I don't know if you remember what's the first question we ask ourselves? That's right. Have the price pressure bands opened? Yes they have as of this candle. And then what's the next question we ask ourselves? Are the dynamic trend bands crossed over or under, in the case of a cell channel, are they matching color or are they within two ticks of crossing over or under, because we have a cell channel, it's under, with the dynamic trend band number one, the reddish color? Well, what we have here after the arrow is we have all three. We have a crossover matching color so you trade a pullback to the signal line right at that yellow dot exactly 96 gets smashed down 74 so as we're watching this thing now and they're still propping it up see even the they're spiking it back up and the candles red because they're doing it so fast that the boomerang algorithms haven't had a chance to change the color of the candle really weird Anyway, what we do with crude oil, the only system in the world that has ongoing steady 90% winning trades every day, an average of 5 to 10 trades, I don't know what today will bring, let's see. So we start trading crude oil. Now, this, this is occurring before the rooms open on these, that we track it from 545, but we have many, many boomerang owners not only that stay in the room and, and watch my analysis, but we have boomerang owners around the world who trade crude oil, so we base it on that. Uh, this was a trade that set up, but it was before 5.45. They actually open at 6 o'clock my time. All right, let's see if we can get rid of this red line now. It's going to show a little resistance. And if they bust below that, the riggers are going to, especially they sell off hard. And don't forget my constipation call up there at 13 uh, well I left the 1350 in, but I recall it back up at 15 but this was only you know, was a, a five points we didn't get stopped out there but anyway just remember that call if that pans out we're gonna see a lot of red ink coming down most likely to this level down here so okay 545 is right here now you can see Boomerang tr trades around the clock, and this was a call. There's a two tick spread right here. Now, I, I'm just going to use this as an example. I know it's 5:30, but look at this. This is a West Coast chart. See the 67 over down there, where I'm wiggling that. So you take 67 and you pull it down to the dynamic trend under one. See that 65? That's a two point spread there. The dynamic trend bit number one is already the bluish bull color. That's a two tick spread. That permissions you to buy right here on this pullback to the signal line. 77 and 77 jams straight up to 90 within. Now look at this candle. 530.57. And within that one candle, 76 jammed up to 87. Within one candle, so within one minute on the entry, it gave you 10 ticks. 
And I don't care where they go after that. It doesn't matter. The idea is you get your 10 ticks. And you're done with the trade. Now, obviously, they made a choppy climb up here. See how the sellers are trying to sell, but they keep getting blocked by the riggers. And it's so disgusting. The market needs to puke out all this rigging. And they just keep, you know, they start trying to block the selling. So let's watch now on the mini NAS we're talking about. I'll go over the crude oil, too. We're watching now to see if they're going to let the selling really come in. They're heavily controlling it. A lot of times what I see them do during this period is they put on robots in the market. and They start robotically controlling the price to get a controlled demolition on the downside. Now look, there was that constipation move I told you about was going to happen. I detected it way up here. I said they're constipating the markets now. Remember that? It was crystal clear and... I've got it on tape. <laughs> if you don't Target me. filled. And there's the fill. You heard the little electronic lady filling that trade on a smash down to 650 there. So short at 1350, smash down to 650 for seven points. And I think lower to go. I think that was a pretty bad constipation condition there. And that's why I use maybe a little. <laughs> a little grosser term because it is a gross thing what the Federal Reserve does. It's very gross that they constipate the markets like that. Then traders have to puke it out because there's so much selling built out. They don't want to waste money trying to block it. The point is, though, at certain point when it gets sold off like this, they come in and they put robots on the market where they'll, they just do that to stall the selling. And they'll go down four, five ticks up five ticks, down four, three, four ticks, or a point, up a point and a half. And they slow grind the market back up, then they get it back up here, then they try to spike it up again. Now, I'm not saying they'll do that today. This market, on record, on tape, on this date, which is, uh, today is the uh, April 26th, so if you're watching this tape now and it's a month later, you can look at your daily charts I said this Dow needs to lose at least 500 to 1,000 points. So let's see what happens over the next week. <clears throat> it would be kind of interesting. Hey, let's see what happens today. Because I remember when I was talking about the constipation, I said they should be able to fade this, this 31 points easily, get it back down. But if they put the robots on now, what they'll do is they'll stall the drop. And you'll see sellers keep trying to come in and they'll let it go it'll go down three, four, five ticks. Then the robots will automatically buy and pick them back up. Go down five, six ticks, the robots will automatically buy. I think this is gonna get hammered, then we're gonna end up with a down day today. That would be a normal market. A stronger down day, maybe even like a hundred, hundred and fifty, but I just don't know that they're gonna uh, allow that to happen today. All right, so another forecast done done correctly. The trade that I put on live at 1350, yeah, it went to 1850. That's five points. We, by the way, I forgot to mention, we deploy a an eight to ten point mental stop. That's what we do, and we put a hard 12 point stop on. Now that's called what I call an airbag stop. That's an airbag stop, and all that means is that we're it's just like the airbag in your car. That's there to prevent your head from going through the window. Because if that, if you don't get hit with your airbag and you get in a head-on crash, something, you're dead, period. So the airbag could save your life. It's going to throw your neck back against the, the, um, uh, the seat. There's many reports of that. You know, you may need a few chiropractic adjustments, but you're still alive. And that sounds a little dramatic, but that's why I call them airbag stops. I don't expect a 12-point to get hit, but these riggers sometimes go absolutely insane. And if we're trying to hold short, for example, and they just decide to go on a complete goose rampage on the upside, sometimes you need that there just to prevent 
you know the whole thing from going a wire but that's not a big deal you got to get over a stop getting hit as an evil rotten horrible thing horrible especially it's called trading the futures market it's part of the business look if you go down and you decide that's it everybody eats pizza I'm opening a pizza parlor my own pizza parlor I'm not gonna buy a franchise I'm I'm gonna open a pizza parlor well first of all you go find a place you want to open it at right that's there's a lease fee there five thousand seven thousand a month depends on where you live a lot of money every month hundred thousand a year to lease that office or that building now you got to trick it out with what refrigerator you need a refrigerator you need an oven to cook the pizza you need drivers to deliver the pizza you got to have delivery and you need a phone system that when regular customers call the people can pick up the phone like I have when I I don't eat pizza a lot but when I order I call Domino's they got me in their phone system they go hi Mohan did you still want a large whatever I go yes send one out thank you be there in 20 minutes you see the phone number knows everything and that's fine you need a fancy phone system that costs money that's called a loss in business because the phone system costs five grand or whatever you with me that's called a loss you get stopped out that's called a trading loss losses occur from trading people who trade make losses as part of their regular business just like a regular business owner who now starts making the pizza the only reason I use pizza by the way that was the first business I learned from the ground up as a delivery guy I was 16 years old manager liked me took me in said look I'm gonna show you the ropes kid <laughs> think about it we lose a trade oh capital loss in futures trading no big deal remember the sign at the early beginning of the webinar I put up who cares dot 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 so what no big deal put that sign up in the top of your screen it'll improve your mindset you're supposed to have enough money to trade with sufficient risk capital and that if you lose it all it's not going to affect your lifestyle that's the rules now do what you want but keep that in mind so lo and behold and there's our big spike kind of coming to fruition and watching to see if they put on the robots so far you see it looks like what they're doing the sellers keep wanting to come in and hit them look what happens they go down a few more ticks boost it back up they sell off a little bit again here order oh, pending so let's see if the riggers do what they usually do with their uh, target eye on this red line again and they're gonna try to jam it up hey how do you like the opening range by the way yep I told you I didn't have to think about it or worry oh it might not work out no every single day the opening range is really key and I showed you how to use it today and I got it live and recorded so anyway you buy dough for the pizza right you gotta go find a place to sell you pizza dough that's called an expense that's called a capital loss that's for how it's written off in your taxes it's a capital loss in futures trading our capital loss is very minor we work at home we have a computer that's not even considered usually a loss because you can use it for other things like watching movies and ordering Domino's pizza <laughs> or whatever the hell you do but point is you got your fees for data feed like I told you I use e-signal and you have charting service like ninja trader which averages about sixty dollars a month you need the best but that's peanuts compared to running a pizza parlor well so you buy all this dough you have it to keep it refrigerated in the fifty thousand forty thousand dollar refrigerator you had to installed in the leased building which they permissioned you to do and probably required an extra deposit etc 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 well you got the ovens going now you got to get the phones ringing how do you do that advertising that's called a capital expense that's called a loss in business so why is it so evil to lose on a trade or even have a drawdown for the day 
and I'm one of the only traders in the industry that is public and live in a live trading room that can have a drawdown and get it all back and go on to in most cases 90 percent so far over the years get it all back and still end up hitting our target gain some days I can get it all back and that's good enough you know that's called surviving nothing wrong with that but why is it so evil to have a lost trade and people start crying like a little baby when if you everybody knows if you run a business if you buy dough to make the pizzas that's a capital loss when you sell a pizza ah that's a capital gain but if you got to advertise to get people to call you and buy a pizza and use your phone system that costs money and your oven that costs money and use all that those are capital losses you need to sell a lot of pizzas that means advertising that's also called a capital loss but why don't people bitch and moan and scream about but traders who tend to be a sort of a neurotic bunch of people you have a lost trade and that's it they're throwing their pen down and they just like you know getting all mad it's like grow up this is called trading futures losses are part of the business just like any business and there's the goose job I also forecasted for you when I saw him putting the robots on right here trying to prop up the drop and once they get it stabilized I've got this theory I can't prove it but they put on robots because I see how all of a sudden the drop stops they'll go down three or four ticks more and they're grabbed immediately whipped back up down three four ticks trying to sell off again the robots come in and buy them back up then when they get it stabilized right here you see how it's stabilized right in the center of the and they launch more spikes. Pretty embarrassing, isn't it? Not even a U.S. organization, yet they allow them to completely control and manipulate our markets. Hey, as day traders, we don't want that. We want the markets to flow. Yesterday they flowed real nice because the riggers got hammered. They couldn't control the market. There was too many sellers coming in. They finally jacked it up and instead of being down 250 or 300 on the day it should have been down 500 they goose it back up to minus 130 now desperately today they're trying to get it back up why just sit on your hands and let the market naturally trade that's what they're supposed to be doing you don't go to a swap meet and having some guy with big guy with tattoos on everything walk around and tell everybody you better not charge below this price because he's got a buddy over at the other table that's charging lower and he doesn't want you competing and going around all the tables you, you see what I mean having a monopoly on the swap meet a swap meet is people come in set up a booth and sell at whatever price you want to just try to unload some stuff it's not fair I'm a little vocal about the riggers but that's how I launched my career way back in 2001 as I mentioned earlier it's not a big deal everybody knows about them who has a clue if you don't know about them today you're getting a clue and I'm really grateful to the riggers for acting like they are today because it gives me a chance to really prove to you what I'm talking about like this type of thing the fact that I call the constipated markets caused by the riggers and the fact that they can't handle the selling volume anymore so they let them puke out and then they come in and try to control the drop it's called controlled demolition so they start goosing them back up again so anyway no big deal probably getting up in short territory again here uh, yeah, it's not a big deal I'm not that worried about it I'm just saying the overall the market probably will fail in this area and it's right back up to that 13 so let's see if 13 according to my work right here 13 unless the goosers come in and just go ramp straight it up just block out the sellers 1350 now should sell back down and I'm estimating down to at least around 9 to 10 for another short scalp this is called a, a crunch back into the bias that was created by this the problem is, and I you get used to me saying this because if you you I understand what's going on, this should crunch back from 1350 back to around nine. In a normal market, it would be a piece of cake. 
nine or lower and I would have taken that trade at right around 1350 based on the indicators and we'd be watching for move now to nine okay the always the caveat is that the riggers might try to grab them right down here or just like under 10 or something and whip the thing right straight back up I'd rather like to believe and accept that they are should be able to go down to nine maybe even lower but we would scalp for a move down to 950 would be four points if we reshorted that 1350 so watching for a move down to 950 to give us four points on this trade reshorting up there where we just were let's see if we can hit him under 10 smacking him under 10 down to 950 is the goal just a little hit lower here and don't be surprised that the riggers come in here and block that move to 950 and try to goose them straight back up however they should easily be able to drop down to 950 probably even lower but let's see what we got here let's see if we can get that 950 action going they were almost there they look like they're ready just bust 10 a second ago and give us that move back you know give us that couple extra ticks I'm trying to hold here see if we get it oh as forecast they're pro you know because it's right at where you guessed it the red center line they did not achieve the move all the way to the top of the opening range so it looks like they're trying to play games and maybe try to retry again f above 1850 to re-goose it up to the top I don't know I can't say but you can see how they're blocking the short sellers from following the continuation pattern which is normally what you get anyway I know I'm talking a lot a lot of theory why be in the room if you can't learn a lot right so by the way you can start uh, any questions that you may have you can start adding those on here and I will um, be going back over your questions and be glad to uh, discuss with you any questions that you have because we are getting past the uh, two hour mark here at nine o'clock since we started the webinar just keep that in mind so still looking for this thing to move back but you can see how they're rigging it now they're trying to prop it up the market still should be willing to move back lower they're kind of trying to throw water on the what what I, I call those crunches where they rally back up here I got certain indicators that tell me and then I go short again and trade them back into the bias for just a four-point scalp they went down to 10 from 1350 which was the exact area which for the reshort they're back up there now they they should have broken that 10 easily and handed us at that, that four points but because it's all rigged up it's not that easy they still may try to stage an upside goose here but theoretically they should still be able to get crunched back to 950 or lower you should actually be able to go down to in a real market they would be able to go down to eight area maybe more you never know exactly how far they're going to at least eight but let's try again on the 950s okay this is pretty ridiculous but you know that's the riggers for you may take a little time but we're watching for a move down to 950 while we're doing that I'm gonna go over to the crude oil market here from the beginning oh let me write this all down too I'm gonna to track for you because we would normally be out of crude oil you don't want to trade much past 10 o'clock my time which is 1 o'clock because the marketing crude oil clo trades are closed at 1 o'clock my time um, I think 1 o'clock so the idea is the early hours that we trade from 545 to right around this time or maybe another hour you could stretch it is the real active hours after that it gets a little tired so you don't want to push it so let's track these trades I'm gonna go through them all now I promise no 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 side tracking we'll just see where the market goes but the riggers are stopping stalling everything out today trying to goose the market back up all right so <clears throat> up here this 
is not a second level trade. We have a thing called a second level trade, but not when it occurs after a huge move like that. So there's nothing here, no short here, nothing to do long sided here. So you got a same thing here. You get it. The dynamic trend bands, by the way, notice here, they're already crossed under. Now I know they're mismatched colors on and they're even the buy the bullish color but they have crossed under so that resets the whole pattern now all we're looking for is a whole new pattern after this happens so what happens is they come down here and you get a sell channel the dynamic trend bands are already matching color you see that and they've crossed under on the downside so you're good to go on the very first yellow dot pullback. You don't even need the confirmation of the price pressure bands. Let's see if we can smack them down to 950 now after the riggers try to stop the market up again. And there's 950. Boom. Right there on the thing. So that's another four points. The uh, 1350. Well, in all honesty, we had that 1050 short we stopped out for 1450 for four points remember that see i'm i'm really thoroughly honest in reporting why because i don't care i don't mind losses and i don't mind and i i i can't stand how many um frauds are in this industry putting posting phony track records on their sites and all that it's disgusting 1350 was that last short we followed they went up to 1850 that's five points i'm deploying an eight to ten point mental stop and they got crunched for seven points remember that they went down to uh, 650 that's plus seven points that last crunch trade right here was at 1350 at that same line it just happened to be at that same level i was watching my chart i trade off of they went down to 10. They didn't bust. I said, uh-oh, they might try to goose them. I'm just sharing my thoughts because by sharing my experience, I can speed up your learning curve. How are you going to get experience? That's the most valuable commodity in this business. How are you going to get that? You'd have to sit in front of a uh, screen every day and trade, really, really trade every day for 33 years to gain my experience. I'm not saying you can't learn it quicker. I'm just saying... I can save you a lot of time. It's going to take you two to three to four to five years at least. I consider anybody under five years as a brand new trader. It takes a long time to sit in front of these screens and, and go through all your emotions and really learn how to trade. Anyway, this was a crunch trade. So they went down to 10. I said, I'm looking for 950. And when they came back up to this level here, I said, well, you know, the riggers might, they actually came, I think, up 1250. Or was it on this candle? I'm not sure. But I said, yeah, oh, no, no, no. They came down here to 10. They wouldn't bust 10. They came all the way back to 14. I didn't get out. Nobody said to get out. There's no reason to get out. Got to wait and see. Now, if they jammed them up here, we got a problem. Take a loss. Big deal. Who cares? So what? It's a trading loss. Did you run ads for your pizza parlor? Did anybody call and order pizza? Nope. Ran $500 worth of ads and nobody called. Oops. Gee, that's called life. That's called advertising. Trading, it's all in a condensed micro form, so it becomes more emotional. And people start making up stuff like, you lost. Your room's no good. You had a losing trade. It's like, you got to be kidding me. You're serious, right? I mean, I get this sometimes. You had two losses in a row. Your room's no good. I go, what kind of sick talk is that? You don't belong in the futures business, buddy. Out you go. <laughs> anyway, I said they'd go down to at least eight is what I was forecasting. There's eight now. I think lower, though. I think even back to six. But point is, this trade was a, what, what I call a crunch. I do them all the time. And I was worried a little. Because I see the accessory ring, but I said, no, I looked at my indicator. They, no, this thing should crunch. And they just went down to 950. So 1350 down to 950 is four points. And that's the usual amount I look for in a crunch, four points. So just as an example, if we take the four point loss and we add seven point gain to that, that puts us up plus three points. You should write all this down. 
that puts us up plus three points. If we add plus four to that, which we just had on that crunch, that puts us up plus seven points. So scratch out the plus three, now you have plus seven. Now, our normal goal for the day is eight to 12 points. Order okay, pending. Stop. Now, obviously, I've been running this uh, seminar today. I want to be really clear and get everything out to you, all this great information. But let's just do the math for fun. Here's how I do the math. I do this every day in the room, like routine. We've had three trades, one minus four, one plus seven, one plus four that I did live for you. Seven points. Seven times $20, because it's $20 a point on the mini NAS. That's $140. We've had three trades, so I multiply that out by $4.50 times three. That's the commission. you got to pay the commission. Thirteen fifty, so I round it up to fourteen dollars, and I put a little C next to it. This is how I want you to do it. I want you to come in the room, sign up for the room today, or over the weekend, but sign up when you can remember it. It's peanuts, thirty-nine bucks. You're going to make twenty times that in the first couple weeks if you took the trades. And I want you to watch for the first few days. I'm showing you how to build a track record for now. Hundred forty minus 14 so your net per contract is 126 now are you with me on this if you have questions type them in the Q&A thing and I'll go over them in a few minutes we're almost done by the way got to finish the crude though 126 times 4 because we always base it on a blue collar working trading account for my live Nasdaq trades and and the the ideas I give you for managing your account all that Times four is based on four contracts in a small account. You you can trade the margin for futures trading for a mini Nasdaq contract is five hundred bucks. You're only spending you're actually only investing two thousand dollars on four contracts. So you'd need five, six, seven, you know, the more the better in your account. Or have some in your savings ready at home, ready to be deployed if you have a drawdown. We don't usually have drawdowns, so you don't have to worry much about that. But that's just today with what I did for you live here in the room. Trade number one minus four points, trade number two plus seven, trade number three plus four that you saw live with your own eyes is $126 per contract on E-mini times four contracts in a five small five thousand dollar account where you only use two thousand dollars is five hundred four dollars after commission that's what your statement very close to that within a few dollars should show on your statement order pending your futures account if you took those trades and we haven't even done the crude oil yet but i can't expect you to trade crude and mini NAS because you're going to be all ears listening to what I'm saying when we're doing crude oil I mean mini NASDAQ crude oil the signals are given by boomerang I don't trade that room because boomerang calls out the signals for me you just have to learn the method and then you can choose or what some of our members have done have deployed a family member I got a guy who says I showing my girlfriend I do this and I assume he's still out there doing it you gotta love it good idea However, my personal advice, being a pal and someone who knows what's going on with this game, I highly recommend you keep, keep it you know, like a family member or a friend. Try to steer away from teaming up with your spouse or your girlfriend because relationships have, <laughs> have enough problems as it is. You know, If you both don't agree on something, especially after a couple of years you're together, I want that to work out for you, right? I really do. And Dan's up 900 in the simulator. That's good. Good job, Dan. I'm looking at your comments, but I got to get back to uh, uh, finishing my point, though. Try to steer away from husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend type deals. And for our respected lady traders, we got a lot of them in our room. Our respected lady traders, try, you know getting your boyfriend into it or he may see you doing it and go oh, I want to do this too that's all right but the problem is there's enough potential in a beautiful relationship to have little spats and little problems and you don't want that to sour which it could naturally anyway right so oh, oh great 
All you got to do is add futures trading to that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yikes. All you got to do is, you know, add futures trading to that relationship, and you, you're going you're gonna to have some pretty heated things going on. So not necessarily recommended, but I'll leave that up to you. I don't give marital advice, and I don't give any advice, really. The truth is I don't give any advice. I'm a guy who sells professional trade signals, and commentary about those trade signals and the markets for a very small, literally the lowest cost in the industry price. So this is a chance to take advantage of that, and I hope you will. That way I'll keep the business going. Otherwise, I'll just you know, do like I've done many times over the last year. You just go and trade myself, put on 10, 20 contracts, and you run the numbers. I just showed you what 4 looks like. Picture doing 10 to 15. So, but I like the work. I'm committed to it. I've made commitments to traders, and so I'm here. But just keep that in mind. Let me finish the crude oil, and we'll we'll wrap this session up. Go to your question and answers, and uh, have some more fun, and then we'll we'll get the heck out of Dodge here. So, let me just get it straight. I promise not to get sidetracked because we're out of that trade now, and they're back chopping it. They got the robots on. And they're goosing the market back up. See, they had the robots on, but we did get that drop we needed. So no trades here. Trade number one was right here. Crystal clear, obvious. They already crossed under. They're matching color. Sell signal. Take the first pullback. You don't even need the price pressure bands confirmation because they're already confirmed. The dynamic trend bands is the final judge and jury. But if you really want that still, then you can go to the second one. Either way, 10 ticks. That's the first winning crude oil trade of the day. Let's see how they do. Now, this is not a buy trade because when they make a hard extended move like that, you got to be very leery of the first crossover. It's not a buy trade anyway because the price pressure bands are not matching. They're not the two, there's no two tick spread, nothing there. That's not a buy signal at all. That's just a market flipping over. However, notice that the dynamic trend bands crossed back over. That means, all that means it resets the pattern. So this, even though they move lower here, it's not technically a second level trade, but this is a sell here with the dynamic trend band. Sell channel came in, price pressure bands open on this candle. And this candle here, they made a pullback to sig line with both the price are the dynamic trend bands matching color? See that O2? And O2 got smashed straight down to 82. Wow. Second winning trade, 10 ticks. I'm not making this up. This is the exact system. I go over it four, five, six times a day, as many trades as there are. I train on it every day. We've been doing it for over a year and a half. Got a year and a half track record of 90% winning trades. There's nothing left to do. Once that's achieved, if you're following the exact system, there's nothing left to do here. Doesn't matter where they go. And they got hit. And there was, unfortunately, we there was no second level trade. Usually what happens here, they'll reverse enough for Boomerang to shift algorithms and print a buy arrow here. If a buy arrow locks down on a candle, then when they go back lower and you go and do a second level trade, that's a valid trade. We didn't get that here. They just smoked them to the down. Yikes. This technically is a second level trade here. This gives you an example how. No, it's not because they crossed over. And this is a very. One of our. We only got two rules. And this is a very extended move. So you're not going to take any way, no way, no how. The first crossover. That wasn't a valid setup anyway. This one sold off again. Arguably, this is a short here because the dynamic trend bands are matching, but a little bit weird pattern. Better leave it alone. But just for the record, 28 did get smashed all the way down to 14 for another 10 ticks. I'm not going to record that, but it did match dynamic trend bands on a new sell channel, but that was way up here. Again, a weird pattern. Better leave it alone. The buy pattern was not correct either because all this flipping around, here's the only other rule. See that 
flatness of that dynamic trend band number one and number two you don't want to trade with that you just want to wait for the next setup well lo and behold they just couldn't pound that crude oil enough today the sell channel opened up again the price pressure bands are open on the downside as of this candle <coughs> the matching dynamic trend bands are there you gotta go short at that sixty three dollars and twenty one cents which gets smashed straight down to sixty three ten for the third winning trade in a row on crude oil all by the exact crystal clear mechanical rules and as I mentioned you can watch the video this again or you can uh, go over to my boomerang trader site and watch the video where I it's all recorded there very brief video okay this is not a valid trade there's nothing going on here but when they cross it's just whipsaw and look how flat the DTBs are here nothing to do here and again a very excessive downside move you want to wait till this is all curving up and the price pressure bands are not right either look at that's flat and a big bubble those usually reverse these bubbles and it did they crossed over again see how they crossed over again that resets the pattern I just mentioned that to you so once again there they go on the short side again on a reset pattern it's not a third level trade which we don't allow in the system the rules don't allow it it's not a third level trade it's a reset sell arrow price pressure bands open up pull back to the signal line right here you're already matching the dynamic trend bands 04 gets smashed down to 91 fourth winning crude oil trade in a row you can buy boomerang it's only 1195 it's more than free because you own it for life and you'll see as of today and yesterday and the day before in fact let me just tell you we had uh, four winning trades yesterday on crude oil four winning trades a day before eight winning trades a day before seven the day before five the day before four the day before that three the day before a light day for some reason seven the day before that five the day before that eight before all winning days eight winning crude oil trades day before that five April 9th a whopper 11 trades on April 8th I don't know I just work here <laughs> I don't know why they decided 10 winning trades on April 4th not eight winning trades on April 3rd April 2nd was six eight winning trades seven on April 1st I just read you the whole month all winning days so you can see if you just kind of heard those numbers <coughs> probably an average of well five to ten is a good range but an average of about six to seven winning trades a day but some days a lot more some of those you remember had 12 it just you never know you just follow the system it's mechanical virtually mechanical nothing here I know they had a crossover but you gotta just use common sense look at the whipsaw here and even if you got stopped out by the way this let me use this to tell you how our stop system works <clears throat> say you took this trade it's not a good trade it's not correct why because look at this massive extended if I scrunch it up you'll see what I mean look at this massive downside move just in the last chunk that we're talking about this trade here why this is not a valid trade just this last chunk here look at that it's a huge move but it was part of a second and third and fourth level move you got to be careful on the buy and look at that they just wouldn't let it go look at this what I got to check the news holy smokes man what a pounding crude will take get my gas price down darn gas right here so expensive so this is not a valid trade for a buy signal I hope you can understand simply why it's the rule is after a long extended move we don't take the first buy 
but we wait for the second one wait for everything to turn up and turn around so that's one of the rules that's not a valid buy trade what did they do sell channel opened up again with the dynamic trend bands crossing that resets the pattern guess what they matched colors you're short again at 90 and they blasted them down for another 10 ticks fifth winning trade in a row we're not done yet no second level trade here I, this is unbelievable so again finally a turnaround but I'm telling you we don't want to take that first turnaround even though after a move like this it's bound to get somewhere and it kind of did the dynamic trend bands crossed over and you had the slope you had everything working for you you could have taken this one if you wanted but yikes you know maybe you stood aside either way let's see what what the long trade because here they are crossing over dynamic trend bands pointing upward and everything it got long at 42 and 42 that's the magic of boomerang ran ran exactly to 52 there's 10 ticks right there that's the magic of boomerang maybe you got eight or nine but 10 ticks was there available pulled back shot up to like a rocket ship no sell pattern here again sort of a very kind of scary second level trade here I wouldn't take it why because it's just straight up radical type trading you got to use a little common sense if you did get long here on a second level move because you had a counter arrow some yellow dots red count that doesn't matter just the idea is that it doesn't disrupt oh no you had a cross over here you had a cross under I mean that reset the pattern this pullback was enough to cause a cross under so you would go long here at 91 and 91 ran up to 98 so here's how the stop works you deploy the bottom rim of this trade channel see the trade channel the shaded area let me open this up you can actually put lines in there but I don't because I don't want to clutter up the room charts again this would have been a very look at all this whipsaw it would have been a highly speculative trade but say you took it you deploy the bottom rim of the channel there and the next trend band which is this orange line so you would not want to see it go down and tap this orange line twice before you would look to get out now there wasn't a counter arrow if you get a counter arrow blinking automatically you get out you didn't get that there so if you <clears throat> saw him come down if you survive this spike down here which wouldn't have been a problem you're long at 92 that's only 83 and you automatically deploying on crude oil a 13 tick stop which is not much at all looking at it but still it's it's very wide it's an airbag stop the I haven't seen one get hit in over a year 92 a little scary move down to 83 but if you survived and held that then you're back up here from 82 up to 92 <clears throat> and then this one we talked about earlier when we had were in the room this is just classic boomerang cross under matching dynamic trend bands down they go so that's arguably the seventh winning trade but I'll say one of those trades the last one we just did before this one was questionable and maybe got stopped out for some ticks but you don't just jump out you got to follow the rules you got to follow the rules and 13 ticks was not hit so anyway they made a normal downside move so you're watching for a move to get long on and what happened here is there's no trade because if you look on this candle right here that's the last pullback sing line the spreads too wide so no trade here so leave it alone choppiness coming in crossovers on the upside but market's still struggling and now here we are right now and it's just struggling because of the as I mentioned earlier all that activity day tons of activity means the markets probably get a little tired here 
and these riggers have been goosing the market up all day screwing everything up for day traders however we still pulled out as you saw live and it's now recorded a $500 paycheck I'm not saying I made 500 you made five I'm just saying as a measure seven points minus commission times four contracts would have netted five hundred four dollars and the dollar is simply a measurement it means nothing unless you took the trade but we have many members in our room that take these trades every day with us and they would have been able to cash in at that level I'm showing six winning crude oil trades so then we'll take that that's 60 ticks that's six hundred dollars I'm leaving out that questionable one minus six trades six times four fifty twenty seven dollars commission six twenty seven or uh, six hundred minus twenty seven netting five seventy three in terms of dollars or euros or whatever the heck you use the whole idea again I'm disclaiming the dollar thing I'm not trying to say oh we made this much there's no claims here in the room I sell trade signals and the trade signals if you take them and you follow the exact entries and exits that I give make the amount of money that we stayed in the room if you got those exact entries and exits which is probably very rare you'll be close because it's fast markets and ticks flying all over the place you'll be close but it's not going to be exact. You might have had better price entries than I did. 504 plus 573. Let me get a drum roll. Plus 1077. I sell trade signals. That's what I do. My combined total trade signals from my Boomerang Day Trader software in the room today, live, done right before you. And my live called out NASDAQ trades guided tick by tick each trade um, not as intensely today as if we're in the room trust me the entries will be crystal clear and all that but for what it's worth today I did it very close to that but I wasn't I was focusing more on doing the webinar but you you know it's all true and it's all there on the recorder grand total 1077 spread out and total in dollars now again nobody's going to take all the crude trades by themselves and all the Nasdaq trades it's that's too ride em cowboy it's too Rambo don't do that <laughs> you're not going to take all the trades you just want to take um, mostly focus on Nasdaq and do some order oil pending or some days do crude oil and don't do the Nasdaq see there's different ways you can work it that's where we give you a lot of opportunities in the room and uh, I'm going to go over your questions now. I really want to thank you for joining with us today. And I appreciate it very much. Stick, stick around. We're going to have the question and answer period now, but I'm going to shut off the tape recorder. Just a second here. I'll be right with you. Do a couple of things so I make sure and lock this video down.